What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Dissect That Film, where we dissect your favorite films, film franchises, and TV. Today, on episode 92 of the podcast, we are venturing into the final film of the Sigourney Weaver saga, Alien Resurrection. I am your host, Brett Parker. Joining me as always, the wonderful Dan and Angela of DNA Gaming. Hello. Hello. Did I scare you a little bit? I was scared there. No, no. I was just overreacting. <laughs> I, was just, I was just like, I'm going to do something ridiculous. I got a little chuckle out of you, so that's all that matters. <laughs> it's always great. It never goes smooth, and that's okay. I'm sorry. I should stop doing no, that. Like family I don't plays. care. I don't care. Burn faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So we are four films into this franchise already. We're halfway through because... We're going to announce it here in the beginning of the episode. I put up a poll on Twitter about adding Alien versus Predator and Alien versus Predator Requiem. Requiem. Bleh, can't even say the title of that stupid movie. But uh, <laughs> I call it stupid. I haven't seen it in a while. But um, we put a poll up to see if if you all wanted us to add those two movies to our Alien journey here. And you all said yes. Well, most of you said yes. There was a vast majority of people said please do or why not or just uh, wh- uh yes you might as well <laughs> which was one of the answers Glorious. but uh yeah, talk about more of so i'm excited yes so after this episode we are going to be taking a break from the franchise next week with our special guest which we'll announce at the end of the episode and then we will be going into the 2004 alien versus predator where we'll be venturing back into the world of paul ws anderson the man behind all the wonderful Resident Evil movies. It'll be the first time we've talked. We'll talk about that man as dissect that film because we weren't dissect that film back when you did the Resident Evil reviews. So let's see if he redeems himself with Alien versus Predator. A couple weeks and you'll you'll see. <laughs> so Alien Resurrection. This is a movie I have not seen in many, many, many years, probably since I was a kid or a teenager. I don't remember. But yet I remember it so fondly after rewatching. I was like, man, I remember all of this happening. It wasn't one of those movies that you haven't seen in a long time and then you forget like, oh, that happened. Oh, that happened. No, it was like, wow, this feels like I saw it a couple weeks ago. I just everything just everything just (laughs) no i don't even i'm not gonna even say it's bad i mean we'll get into what we thought um but yeah i guess pleasant surprise i don't know (laughs) i had i had a few in here yeah the cast was uh, there was a couple people in the cast i i forgot was in it and um yeah this was this was something else but let's start off with you guys what did uh we'll start with angela because she is She's venturing into a lot of these movies for the first time. So, Angela, tell us what you thought of Alien Resurrection. Um, I've watched it twice in the last week. <laughs> Sorry. Because she loved it so much. She's like, I need more of this in my life. <laughs> really? You sure? There was parts that I liked. Um, there was <laughs> actors in it that I liked. Are you gonna be, if you're going to be that negative, you can just go. I just can't, I just can't carry on. I didn't like the way the um, aliens looked. Don't spoil it. I'm not. He's asking what I thought about it. <laughs> oh, Gosh. Um, but I didn't really care for it. Okay. I felt because see, I had to watch it twice because I fell asleep. Like I dozed off a couple different sections. Mm-hmm. I watched it again, and I don't feel like I missed anything. I told you, we would have covered for you. Because I'm like, I called that. Oh, okay. But yeah, no, I didn't really care. I didn't really care for it. All right, Dan. Uh, it, it, mm. All right, let, let's, let's preface this. This is, again, post-Alien 3, one of the Alien movies I actually remember. Because I remember, what, this is 97 this came out? Yep. It's all been 11. 10 or 11 when this came out. Uh, I remember my, I would have been 11 because my parents rented it. It was my mom and dad or my mom. I remember Joe being there. She knows. Nobody else knows. Uh, but I remember some specific scenes from the cheeks. movie. Huh? Cheeks. Yep. Tater cheeks. Cottage cheek. You had to bend there. Anyway, um, it, 
it, it's okay. It's an all right movie. I mean, it, it's passable. I mean, Sigourney Weaver's good. There's some, there's actually some, there's some elements that I liked, but it was like interesting tidbits, like along a very bland trail, not like bland, but you know, a mediocre trail. I'll say that much, but eh, it was okay. The aliens were fine. They did alien things. Um, I, I, I thought there was some elements we'll, we'll talk more about when we get into it later that were like, it was cool, but then like in execution, you're just like, Huh. So that's how they decided to do it. But anyway, it's okay. It's fine. It's another alien movie. This kind of felt like I like like Godzilla movies. You know, there's only so much they can do with them, but I still enjoy watching them, even the ones that aren't that great. That's kind of how this movie felt to me. Like, it's okay. Like I could sit down, just throw this in, and be in the background, and that would be a okay. I did not like how they sounded either. Yeah, there was some. I was like, don't do oh, that. The, don't the alien roaring. Like especially when they're when like they were fighting, talking over the water cooler and shit. When they were oh, like arguing with each other. Yeah, I didn't like. That. Like, yeah, I didn't care yeah. for that. I didn't care okay, for that. So, like, are, I know what scene you're talking about, and it, yeah. it, to be honest, it makes it makes sense for the scene. I I was confused by. I think I mean watching it now, I understood what they were doing. It was all a plan. It was just like a. It was like the raptors in Jurassic Park co- talking to themselves. Like communicating with themselves to try to figure out a plan to escape, and that was their plan to escape. We'll talk more about it when we get to that scene. But I, I, I didn't mind that. That was a scene I didn't even. I was like, "Oh, that's actually pretty cool." I like the whole strategic plan behind it. I like the I scene. Like the scene. I just don't like the don't, noise. That yeah, I don't care. It's like some mm-hmm. kind of. It's not a noise that you hear from them. No. Any other time, so I'm like. I always felt that they operated more like a hive mind. Like ants, like to a, to the better, like greater end or whatever, greater you know whatever means to an end kind of thing. But it's fine that they added this. It felt very Jurassic Park. Yeah, and that was that, that, what this did. But the whole scene as a whole like, is a cool idea, and I like that's another thing I'm talking. About. It's like cool scenes like sprinkled throughout. But there were some surprising actors in this movie. I was like, we'll get to it when we get to it, and I think you know who I'm talking about. I was like, how was that guy look familiar? And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Uh, but yeah, the one I just pointed out probably, but it's okay. It's an okay movie. I, I it's it's I think it's barely below a popcorn film. It's like a high tier TV movie. Like it's just like, yeah, it's okay. That's it. That's all I got before I keep repeating myself. It is definitely my least favorite of this franchise so far that we've covered. Yes. Yes. But I still thoroughly enjoyed it. Like, I don't think it was great, but it, I think. The, I love, I mean, I mean, Alec Gillis and Tom Woodruff's design on the Xenomorphs still top notch. I love how they look. They would, um, they, it, and I'm glad that they went more towards CG. I know it was 97, so CG was starting to become bigger at that yeah. point, so they were able to use it more. It didn't look great, but for 97, it looked fine, I, and it looked a lot better than the Rod Puppet oh, aliens yeah. from Alien 3. My wife's like, are they... Are we gonna see more of that weird alien look? So I was like, no, you're just gonna get more early night or late '90s CG, which is just a tad bit better than that. It's not great. Yeah. There were some points where there was one shot where like a xenomorph just looks like it's sparkling, like it looks like it's covered in diamonds. It doesn't even look because like you see them in the practical like the suits, and it's like black, like they're like glossy black. And yeah. then there's like a scene where it's like crawling on the side of a of the one of the escape pods, and it just looks like it's covered in diamonds. It's just shining. <laughs> Shine on you, crazy! Diamond. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, those are small nitpicks. Um, the ending was weird <laughs> in this movie. The ending was so weird. It goes from like, okay, I'm. Some of the characters are very unlikable, and I some of the characters that survived this movie, I wish didn't survive because they were just it. When you meet them in the beginning, they're just awful. Yes. And then there's characters who you're like, I really hope we see more of this guy, even though he did say some weird shit that is just kind of fucked up, but I would like to have seen more of this character. And then it just, he he's like gone in the dumbest way possible. Yeah. And then there's a note. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah, there's one that I was like, why did that guy die? Like in that moment, why did he die? Oh, you know what I'm talking th- about. This one. Yeah, I was like, what? 
Why? He should. He'll be all right. <laughs> but there was some like the cast was generally good in this movie. Like they got some good people They're for fun. this movie. Like Ron Perlman. This is this is um, you know, this was before Hellboy. This is before even Blade Two. This is a post. Oh God, what the hell was he even famous for at this point? Like Beauty and the Beast, the TV yeah. show, or something like that. Yeah. That's what and I uh, he was in a he was in Guillermo del Toro's first movie. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. But uh, yeah, like just early roles. We had Winona Ryder in this movie, which was yeah. awesome. I to be honest, she was one of my favorite characters in the movie. Uh, I mean, Sigourney's back. And to be honest, she was it was weird because you got like you got old Sigourney and then you got weird as fuck. Sigourney or Ripley in the movie and I'm just like what direction is she going like I understand who she, I understand what she is and what she's doing but it was just it was weird there were some scenes where she's acting normal and talking having like a normal conversation and there's others where she's just trying to be so overly like creepy and she yeah, just says yeah. weird stuff and like the motion she makes I was like I mean I guess that's a good performance because she's got a she's not playing the Ripley we all know and love she's this this is a this is a different Ripley. Yeah. So hey, good for her. Oh, he was in Bonkers and Animaniacs? Fuck. Yeah, I know he was Clayface. But uh back, overall, I, I I overly enjoyed this movie. I didn't I don't think it's gonna be something I go back and rewatch anytime soon. It you know, compared to any of the other alien movies that we've watched. Mm -hmm. I still it's probably the worst of the quadrilogy. Uh the Sigourney Weaver era of this franchise but i don't from from other alien movies that happen in the future i don't think it's going to be uh, on the bottom of the list once we're all said and done with this franchise yeah and i, I think i think this is is just part of how good the first two were is why these two get such a rap yeah because i mean realistic they're not they're i mean the third one's a pretty good movie and then this one is just okay, in my opinion. It's decent. But it's still, it's not horrible. There's way worse movies than this yeah. that we've talked about on here. Well, plus, the kills were kind of weak. Uh, they had some pretty uh, cool close-up shots of the, of, like, tongue kills from the Xenomorph. There's one, wait, there's, there's two scene kills in particular that I really liked. And they're at the very end of the movie. But there was a few that I was like, what? That's yeah. fucking lame. I'll t we'll talk about it later. But yeah. So... This movie was directed by Jean-Pierre Jeannot or Genet. He is a French director who uh, the only other work that I recognize is Emily, which I've never seen, but I've seen the cover of it. It's I just remember seeing it like at when I worked at Walmart and it was always in the five dollar bin somewhere. And I was like, I wonder what this is. And I it was like, I'll probably never watch it. I thought it was the director i i i always get him and the director of jaws 2 mixed up like their names are very <laughs> close together and i was like is this yeah. the guy who directed jaws 2 <laughs> but no it's not oh this was written by joss whedon i saw that we were like what the fuck so yeah the man behind the avengers buffy the vampire slayer um, other things, <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, no. he wrote this movie, but he has voiced that this is not a movie. Like he wrote the movie and they didn't drastically change his script. He just doesn't like how people, the, the actors performed what was in his script. It was way, it just felt way different than what he was trying to portray on the page. So he does not like this movie very much. <clears throat> Did he specify what he was trying to go for? I think he was trying to make it a little darker. He was trying to make it. A, he was trying to bring it back to its roots and it just didn't feel like it was. You know, I was trying to he was trying to make it feel more like a horror movie, like the original Alien. If anything, you try to bring in elements from Aliens, but it just came off in such a weird, weird way. I don't know exactly. I didn't really look into it. All I know is that he voiced his. His disdain of this movie. Huh. Well, as I say, because Alien 3 felt more like hearkening back to the original. Why would you want to do it twice in a row? I mean, it's okay if you keep that element, but it, like the third one felt like the original one in a sense. The right. single alien, you know, 
Yeah. Uh, whatever. I feel like you'd want this one to be more like aliens because of the amount of xenomorphs you have in play mm-hmm. in this movie. Kind of the whole, you know, what what is this research vessel doing with all these xenomorphs? What is their actual agenda? So I don't know. I just know that he did not, he was not a fan of this movie. He wasn't a fan of the direction that it went in, but it didn't, but it was one of those things where, you know, you write a script and then they change it drastically. Like they'll just, you know, the director will go off and do something completely different or the studio will do rewrites on it. They didn't rewrite it. It was all his, his work. It just wasn't exactly what he envisioned when they performed it. I wonder, like you said, I wonder if it's a uh, directorial thing because there's there's scenes specifically. We'll talk about the escape pod scene mm-hmm. that just came off as kind of goofy. Oh, where they're just like, evacuating everybody? Yeah, the very last one though. That. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like this, it, the way it's shot and portrayed just comes off as like, is this also borderline like comedic? Also, the actor that they had for the general oh. in this movie, which I don't get me wrong, Dan Hadaya. I think his name is. I I remember him from the Adams family. And he, and he's ve- he's a very stuff. comedic actor in my eyes. Like in the things I've seen yeah. him, he's not. I can't take him seriously. So they're making him be the serious general, who's like the head of this vessel, but it, he just comes off as a goober he the does. entire time. I can't take him seriously. And there are other characters in this movie that I feel were made to be more comedic and more goofy than him, but he came off way more goofier than most of those characters. Like Ron Perlman is a goof. Like as much, he's a piece of shit, but he's also a fucking goober. Yeah. But I think that's how he was supposed to be portrayed. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, (laughs) he's a piece of shit as, as most of the crew of this, of this vessel is, but, uh, or of the Betty, which is the smaller, um, salvage vessel. But, uh, yeah, he was just, I don't know. It was kind of, I feel like it was a miscast. Um, they make it pretty cut and dry to how, you know, how the cast of the Betty or the crew of the Betty is. But yeah. then there's like some characters like that seem like they're going to be just, they're going to be a badass and they're just fucking squandered. <laughs> they're just off early. And we're like, what the fuck? Yeah, it will get. And, and there's that one character who I was very excited about. I wanted him to do more. Yep, And he was just killed off so quickly. Why? And I was like, I know. did he not want to be part of the movie and they had to find some way to kill him? I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. It was just, it was weird. So this again was produced by David Geiler and Walter Hill, who produced uh, Alien Three, mm-hmm. and uh, Scorny Weaver was also a producer. I mean, four films in, she's gonna get her name put on there. She actually didn't want to come back to this movie. Uh, she heard. didn't want to come back, but they asked her why she decided. She's like, well, they pulled up with a big dump truck full of money. I, money I heard. Talks. I heard it was- I heard it was that, and there was one scene in the movie. Yes, that she really wanted yes, to do. which is yeah. one of my favorite scenes of the movie. It is. It's a it really good scene. Uh, yeah. Also, I, I'm guaranteeing they were like, "Oh, we'll put you as a producer. We'll put a, a producer credit on you because I know she, you get more money." She was paid 17 million dollars for this movie, which is a lot I'm in like, 19 for one actor in 1997. Yeah, like we'll let shit in. Come on, we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> I mean, nothing. <laughs> nothing beats. Nothing would beat Jack Nicholson's like. I think it was sixty million dollars for the Batman for Batman eighty nine, but uh, yeah, but that was also Jack Nicholson. This stars Sigourney Weaver, of course, coming back as Ripley in air quotes. Uh, we have one of my favorites, Winona Ryder, which we've talked we didn't talk about we we talked about her not too long ago when we did Edward Scissorhands. Oh fuck yeah, it's right. Mm. Ron Perlman. Dan Hadea. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> He's like, damn it. Disappointed. Uh, J. E. Freeman, who is, I would say, the villain of this movie. He's the one who plays Ren, the the doctor. Yeah. Uh, Brad Dorif. Yeah. I was like, yeah. what? I was, dude. I'm telling you, we were watching the movie. I was like, God, I know that guy. I know who he is. I know him from something. There is one like, scene where fuck? all you hear is him talking. You don't see his face, and you're like. Is Chucky giving a dialogue right now? It just sounds straight up like Chucky is is talking about xenomorphs. We're way in the future. Are they still making those things? <laughs> what a crossover <laughs> that would be. This is interesting. Chucky versus aliens. 
<laughs> they did all the other ones in comic books. Yeah, yeah, Alien versus Predator, Batman versus Alien. Dude, they did Alien Superman versus Batman. Predator versus the Terminator in a comic book. Oh, That's fuck, yes. awesome. I need to find that. And uh, the one that we were talking about is like the disappointment because he wasn't in this enough was Michael Wincott from The Crow. He was yes. also in this. He was also in Nope, which came out last year. He was really good in that. I I was like, I know that voice. I got a question. And I've heard that voice a few times. I have seen him in movies. Does he still to this day sound like he is still drinking sandpaper? Yes. Dude, I love his voice. It's that amazing. His, I was like, does yeah. he really sound like that? It's fucking awesome. Using <laughs> Robin Hood, King of Thieves. I wish it was. Or Prince of Thieves, guy. sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, this was uh it was surprising because I remember reading I, I oh I was watching um Cursed Films on Shudder, and The Crow was one of them, and Michael Wincott was in that movie, and he was actually there uh when Brandon Lee uh ended up you know getting shot and you know mm-hmm ended up dying and it fucked him up for a long time where it was surprising that because i know like a lot of people said like he didn't do a lot after that happened it took him a bit but that like i'm looking at his imdb i'm like it looked like he was in a lot of stuff after that because the curl came out in 94 and he's got credits in 95 96 97 98 like pretty much every year up i mean his biggest gap was between Ghost in the Shell, which came out in 2017, which he had an uncredited role oh. in that, the live action version with Scar- Scarlett Johansson, and uh, this uh, Nope, which came out last year. So five, that was what five years. Yeah, at least he's still getting work, and he's doing things, and he's really it's good at Nope, for him. which we'll talk about at we some point. We talked about. We talked. So we we looked up another actress that's in this movie. That's also in another movie that we just recently. Yes. Really. Yes. Who is it? She's not a not a big uh, role, but the is she lady, the ass lady, the lady that plays <laughs> Hillard, is in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Is that the one who gets the foot massage laying on her stomach? I think, yeah, I think so. The, it is it's the she, greatest foot massage ever. I'm like, at first, I was like, what? Well, what kind of foot massage is that? I'm like, I get it, I get it. You get a good view yeah. while you're doing you it. Tell, <laughs> you want to tell her what he what she does? I just. Yeah, but what she did in the oh, movie. She's the lizard. She was one of the lizards. <laughs> <laughs> Good for her. Oh, that's awesome. She goes from being a lizard performer to getting weird foot massages, sticking her ass out for the movie. I also have to shout out Raymond Cruz, who plays Di Stefano. What a terrible name. I could not pronounce this dude's name. He was one of the he worked on the ship and he worked with Ren, but then he like Ren turns on him, so he becomes what he was the yeah. Hispanic guy. He's at the very end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. he's he's Tuco Salamaca from uh, Breaking Bad, which is and he's a every time I see him in anything, he always plays a fucking psycho. He's always like, ah, I don't. he's an under siege. He's in a lot of things. He I was in Gremlins too. <laughs> what? Yes, he what? was the, he was the male guy who goes. We're talking about Gremlins too now, but we're, he he's the male the mail delivery guy who goes and delivers something in the lab and hears gizmo singing and then tells Billy because he's humming the song and Billy's like, where'd you hear that? He's like, Oh, down in the lab. And yeah, that's, it. Not, that's it. That's the only scene he's in. We should have showed that him to Victor. I don't realize he was in that because Victor likes breaking bad and better call Saul. So he would. He oh yeah. He's, been. he's one of the craziest characters from that show to go Salamaca. I'm oh, so excited to see, uh, I guess Gary Dorden. Oh yeah. From, from CSI. CSI. Yeah, because yep. I love CSI. Yep. I didn't know his name halfway through the movie. I was just calling him Dreadman. <laughs> yeah, what? Well, yeah. I, I mean, a lot of these names are fucking because... weird. Okay, Ron Perlman's name is Johnner. What? Yeah. I mean, I understand we're two hundred. Listen, this movie is supposed to be two hundred years from the end of Alien Three, and I swear it's not that much into the future. They're watching QVC at one point, right? <laughs> like, yeah, wait a second. <laughs> Dude, I want to tell you right now, I was watching that video and they've got one of the videos I have. I was like, buy this antique firearm or whatever. Yeah. It's a fucking, it's a 1911 and they're selling it for a grand. <laughs> Dude, then our 1911s, the good ones are most more than that. If not that right fucking now, <laughs> 1911s are not I'm inexpensive for a good one. Like, man, I like this show. What was it? The, it was the like, chop what? and gut hour or whatever. They had like the one, like the one curve blade. I can't remember what they call them. Yeah. Cookery or whatever. No, I only know I only know Gary Dorden's character because the guy in the the wheelchair Reese? kept yelling his name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, listen, 
beginning of the movie, I was taking bets. Like, Vries, cool guy, I like him. He's one of the more likable characters in this fucking movie. Tim. But, like, I was just thinking, I was like, there's no way he's getting off this fucking ship alive. Like, there's no way in hell he's making that out of here. He's actually, he's a French actor. Uh, the the mm-hmm. actor who plays Vries, uh, Dominique Pinon. He actually was in the director of Resurrection. He was in his next movie, which was the movie I was talking about. The only one I ever recognized, which was Amelie. Okay. Yeah, actually, he was in The City of Lost Children, which was another movie that the director did. So I guess he... Uh, okay. He does. He's he's mostly he mostly does French films. It's cool. He got to break out and do some stuff other places. I liked his character. He was pretty cool. I liked him. I liked that he ca- he cared about uh, his relationship with Call. It wasn't like weird and sexual, even though he tries to. He says a sexual yes. joke is like the first thing you ever hear him. <laughs> right, uh, Leland Orser, Orser, Leland Orser played the dude they find on the ship. Yes. Uh, the crew, the, 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 yeah. The only a reason I looked, I was like, I know who that motherfucker is, and the reason I did is because he was uh, Kingpin's henchman in the 2003 Daredevil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I recognized him from. Yep. Apparently, he's in he's in uh, the podcast series. He does voice. Oh, that's cool. He's he's been in a lot of. I recognize him from a lot of other. things. He was in Seven. He was in the Bone Collector. Oh, yes. Uh, he was in Taken. Mm-hmm. He was actually in uh, Amsterdam, which was a movie that came out last year with um, Christian Bale and Mark oh, Robbie. Good. Glad he's still getting work. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely, I recognize, I was like, damn, he's looking, he's looking young in this one. Good for these folk. Yes. Oh, he was in all the taking. Star Trek Enterprise. Damn. The... He was in CS2. They probably just brought both of them. Right? Oh, yeah. I think he was like, one of the lab workers or something he was like a head lab guy. Oh, he's in Pearl Harbor. He's he's been in a lot of stuff. So, the music was done by John Frizzle. Uh, it's Frizzle. Yeah, husband. I know. He, right, yeah, right. He's got. He gets to. He gets to ride that magic school bus. Fuck yeah, he does. <laughs> no, there's, no, there's no way Miss Frizz is a bottom dude. She has to be on top. She, no way in she fucking takes, hell. She's definitely taking control. Every oh, so she's head of the class. Yeah, it has to happen. So yeah, he's done. Oh, look at me like that. <laughs> he's done music since 1995. He did Beavis and Butthead do America. I figured I'd mention yes. that one. Dante's <laughs> Peak. I still know what you did last summer. Office Space. Okay. I mean, which is Mike Judge, who also did, who's you know the creator of Beavis mm-hmm. and Butthead. Uh, Thirteen Ghosts, Ghost Ship, Cradle oh, to shit. the Grave. With DMX. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> god He's got some good movies under his belt though. Yeah, he does. No. Good job. Good for you, John Frizzle. The music was Absolutely. actually pretty decent. I I you know it wasn't it was memorable, fine. but you know, it was it was good enough to get to get the movie. Void. Yeah. Uh this movie had a budget of $70 million and made $161.4 million worldwide. Uh well, most it of it was only, for Sigourney Weavers. So. Yeah, and um and most of but most of the money was international because it actually was the lowest earning alien film of the franchise in the US. Believe it. It wasn't until that the international money came in that it became one of the highest grossing alien films of the franchise. Good. With you know, when it was all said and done. Does it say where it like did really well or does it? Just no, say I, I mean, I didn't look, I didn't really look too oh. much into that one. I just read my numbers off of uh, the good old Wikipedia. So this movie would premiered on November 6, 1997. It premiered in France a week later in uh, well, six days later in November 12th, 1997. And then in the U S almost two weeks later, November 26, 1997 at Less than an hour, or two hours. Thank you. Even the special edition was less than two hours. I only added like five minutes of extra footage. Really? Yeah. And you know what's funny is that at the beginning of the director's cut of Aliens, James Cameron does a little voiceover about how this is the version we want you to see because it's all the film, the scenes that they cut out, blah, 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 adds an extra 30 goddamn minutes of the movie, which is fine because Aliens is great. This one, when you put the special edition in, the director's like, so yeah, um, the version that there, this isn't a director's cut because the director's cut is the version you saw in 1997 in the theaters. That was the movie we wanted to make. This one was just 
They wanted he pretty much just like throwing the studio under the bus without verbally saying the studio made him do it. <laughs> He's like, I, I mean, it's still good. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, this is the best thing ever, man. This is so I, great. It, it would have been better if they just put I know this didn't exist at that time, but they just put like the image of from SpongeBob where it just says, <laughs> well, here you go. <laughs> like that's <laughs> and the movie just goes. <laughs> the craziest thing is that he didn't speak and he could not speak English during the making of this movie. He actually had translators to help him communicate with the cast. And uh, they actually he he learned English well enough to be able to come back and do a director's commentary for the movie when it came out later on really? down the road. Yeah, that's cool. which I thought was was pretty cool. Imagine that, though, like. Working with like working with anyone who just doesn't speak English at all. I mean, as long as there's a translator there, but whew, that must have that must have been an interesting experience. What was what was the the actors from the black and white era that only learned his lines? Oh, it's Bella Lugosi. Yeah, Bella originally Lugosi. only learned his lines for Dracula. That yeah. was it. Yeah, it was like Abba yeah, when actually- when Abba first started. They literally would only make their they would only learn the words for the lyrics to their songs because they were told oh they're you're only going to get big if you you know sing in english so and they couldn't speak a lick of english so they just were able to they, so like they're creating songs that probably they didn't understand <laughs> but it was like that'd be yeah. fantastic i was that's great but then they learned how to speak english later on yeah which was great abba is amazing um so yeah abba's abba you my only friend i love abba i love it good good so the funny thing is, is so Sigourney Weaver originally didn't want to do this movie like we stated before, but she got paid a lot of money. Why no writer took the job without even getting the script? She was so excited. She literally saw it was an alien movie and she just wanted to brag to her brothers that she was going to be in an alien movie. Yeah, I, I, I if I was in her shoes, I'd be like, yeah, like I would oh, 100%. Like, you would be 100%. Alien movie? Fuck, just pin me, Sign in right me now. up I right know. now. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like a lot of people are like, why did why did this actor take this role in like the sequel to these? It's like, because it's a sequel to a very, you know, famous, you know, it's a big franchise, like the alien franchise. It was still making a lot of money. It wasn't like it, it bombed. It just, they, the, the, the quality just kind of slowly started. Like the, the, the stories weren't as strong as alien and aliens, but at least they were trying and they were succeeding in a way they were still making money. I mean, I can't really say <sighs> can't really say making more money makes your movie good because trans every freaking transformers movie made a billion dollars that doesn't mean they were all good <laughs> that's true that's true but yeah there's a there's a couple more things we'll talk about once we get through the the movie itself but yeah let's talk about this but before that i want to open this beer i got this Wait. beer it's called life on marzen so i figured it's a space theme beer so it'd be perfect for this episode that's about right. us like that. talking about aliens uh, it's from Super Berkshire. Relevant. It's from Berkshire Brewing Company, which is the county I live in. But it's not. But it's not made in the county I live in. It's made in the ca- next bullshit. county over. <laughs> That's bullshit. It is we from. It is from the Berkshire Brewing around. Company Inc. in South Deerfield, Massachusetts. So, what out, kind of drink is that? This is a. It's a, listen. You can say whatever you want. This is an Oktoberfest. I know it's January. Well, technically, when you listen to us, it's February. But you know what? You can drink it whenever. It was more a, for the space theme that I decided I'm going to drink this. It's actually my brother's. He gave it to me. <laughs> I have a coffee cup that I drink out of all the time. That says every day is Halloween. So you, I mean, I drink you, out of my trick or treat mug a, a, a lot when I drink my coffees. I don't know what the, the Oktoberfest beer means. To, it doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, I mean, it's just beer that comes out mostly during October. It's a it's okay. it's more of a multi beer from, you know, Let's try to be like a German beer. Try okay. to match that. Have you had this before? Nope. I've had Oktoberfests before, but not from this brewery. So what's the verdict? I don't know. I'm waiting for this foam to go away. You know, you want more head. Ah. That's what it's called. I don't <laughs> I just know Pretty what good. you mean. Pretty good. Smooth. It's no. not too malty, which is nice. Malty beers are just... Ugh. It's like, wait around the bolted milk balls. Throw more Whoppers in. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to this plot. Because this, this is a fun plot, guys. I'm so excited. 
So, uh, so yeah, this is a, I, I, as we do, if there is a, if there are two versions of a movie, we, we try to each watch the different versions. They watch the theatrical cut. I watch the special edition. I don't think there's a lot of differences. I didn't look up the differences, but they'll, they're going to tell me if they're like, yeah, that didn't happen. Like we did last week, which was probably yeah. the biggest difference between cuts of any of the versions we watched. Yeah. So this movie starts off in space. What? Oh, shit. Well, actually, technically, the first spot. thing you see is a bug. <laughs> you see a CG <laughs> bug, and it's cool because it's, it looks like a xenomorph. And you're like, oh, shit, we're getting xenomorphs right off the bat. And then it zooms out, and it's just a bug. And you're like, I remember this. And this is a this might be an added scene. This might be the added <laughs> like because I don't I don't remember this. Because ours started out like body part, like gross body parts. Yeah. Okay. Ours was gross like, body parts. There we go. Very, like very slimy, fleshy body parts. Like you see an ear and then you see an eye and then a oh. mouth don't look right. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was very, very odd. Well. There we go. There's our differences, guys. Right off the hey, bat. Right woo. off the ripper rooney. We're here. We're not even 30 <laughs> seconds in. I got a question. Yeah. I just thought about this. I don't know why this just hit me. Since you remember when it do you think they have to grow oranges in outer space to keep from getting space scurvy? There's no sun. Uh, that's true. Or it's just all Capri Sun. Or Sunny D, which is give actually me, orange juice. Give me you all the Sunny D from, you can give me. I thought it was vitamin D you got from, I know it's from the sun. Listen, just thinking about Sunny D gives me heartburn. But it's heartburn well worth it, because I love Sunny D. There you go, there you go. I don't know if my body likes it now. I haven't had it in a while, but uh, oh man, I used to drink no. so much Sunny D. It's probably why my teeth are all fucked up. <laughs> I, yeah, I understand. Mine was Mountain Dew, so I understand. Oh, Mountain Dew too. Oh, geez, it was all the bad combinations. <laughs> Sugar right. sweet. I, I felt like I could have produced. <laughs> I felt like I could have produced the Powerpuff Girls out of my mouth. That's weird. <laughs> that's very. That's very weird. That's a movie idea. That's patent pending. Oh, Don't no. take it. I did. <laughs> Getting canceled. Everybody talk about Powerpuff Girls out of the mouth. But it was cool. Patrick this 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 did. shot was really cool of it being. You think it's a xenomorph, and then it zooms out, and it's just a bug. It's pretty much symbolizing that xenomorphs are just space bugs. It's kind of like yes. the symbolism there. And uh, the, yeah, the guy squishes it in his hand and then just kind of looks at it going, what am I supposed to do with this on my finger? And then, uh, and, and he's also slurping on like a big slurp. I'm like 200 years into the 200 and from where we are today to this point is probably like what? 300 years? Because it was like 57 years and then okay, so we'll say like 260 years between Alien and Alien Resurrection timeline yeah, wise. Fairly. Yeah. This man's slurping on a big slurp. He went to a Cumbies. He went to a Cumberland Farms and got a big slurp. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay, 7-Eleven. Yeah, that works. It's a Cumberland farm. <laughs> Do you know what a Cumberland Farms is? No, I know what Cumberland Road is. We got one near us. <laughs> it's a convenience store. It's a 7 It's like a 7-Eleven. I'm sorry. So, I, I forgot I'm in the Northeast and you guys are in the South where things are yeah. very different. <laughs> I was going to say, I grew up with a 7-Eleven. So. We have, well, we have, we, but that's we have 7-Elevens too, but where I, like, where right. I go all the time, let's call, that's what it is. Where, so you had Casey's. Casey's had and come and go. Yeah. Oh, what a, a what a name. A U M. Oh my god. <laughs> Dead serious. That's even worse. That's real... Yeah. But we had we had like Casey's, we had Come and Go, we had That's a terrible. What's the other big one? Bam. Was it not Sit Go, was it? I don't know. It's not important. No, but around have... you have Quick Trip Racetrack, Loves. And we're starting to get bug we're getting buckies. But anyway, carry on. Wimbledon Farm or what the fuck you said. Cumberland Farm. So... <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, the um the yeah, the guy's got the bug on his finger. He's been drinking a big slurp. And then we get the and then he get takes the straw out and spitballs the bug onto the windshield. I was like, "What?" Like he's already squished it in his finger. How the hell was he able to get it to be a ball to then shoot it like a spitball? Yes. I've got it playing right now just to just to make sure that I wasn't like No, it's not there. Something, but it's that's not there. And what's the next shot? Uh, it's the title card, and it's the it's a big ship coming into yeah, view. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, okay, so it's just it's instead of the a mouth doesn't go next to your vagina thing, 
It's the <laughs> it's the ship. I mean, I swear that's what it looked like. Like, they got a mouth I, back I'm there. Trying, I think hole. I know what you're talking about. Like it's like it's because you see them. Like, yeah, you see those uh, creatures later. It's terrifying. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's it's just a big old ship going through as the credits roll, showing yeah. you know all that. So we are on the USM Agura. It's a research vessel, and we see that Ripley has been cloned. And it was a it was something I read was that Sigourney Weaver gave. Uh, the visual effects guys a picture of her when she was younger to get the cl- younger clone to look like her. That's pretty clever. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's a good idea. Still weird seeing something that looks like a little kid naked. Yeah, it's it, even it's, though you know it's, it's not weird. real. And then the next scene is Brad Dorf's character operating on her to remove. The Xenomorph Queen. I was very confused. I've seen this movie before, but I was very confused. I was like, wait a second. Is this clone Ripley? Or is this... Did they find real Ripley that didn't die in Alien? I was so confused at one point. And then I was like, ah, they clone her. And then they took the DNA of the Queen Xeno and insert it into the clone. They pull the Queen out and all that. And Dan's done. He doesn't want to be here anymore. You Yeah, you find out that it's, you know, Ripley. It's that, that clone that we saw in the beginning she was injected with the DNA of the queen xenomorph. And that's what they were pulling out of her. And, but I was, I was just very confused. I'm like, I, she died at the end of alien three. How is this happening? Like, I'm just very confused, but then I wasn't as confused when I figured it out. Sorry. Then they, this looks like a penis. It, I was supposed to say in the foreskin peels back. That's exactly what 100%, I'm like. I mean, when, when HR Geiger created the xenomorph, yeah. That it was hundred like percent made it look like a penis on person or on person on person. purpose <laughs> on a person. That, Imagine that that's, that's going to be my. I mean, listen, there is a very very sexual kill in this movie, and we'll get to it. It it's not meant to be sexual, but it definitely has a sexual touch to it. We'll get to it when we. Yeah, you have to remind me. I'm like, oh I'm like my go god, I can't wait yeah. to talk about it. Um, not that I sure like, not. I, and I want everybody to know I don't always enjoy talking about sexual things on the show, but when it's in the movie, I, it's and it's, fu- yeah. Dan, yes. Dan is our sexual <laughs> innuendo. <laughs> well, this whole scene right here is a metaphor for birth. She's like, oh yeah, hundred percent material. Yeah, when she's in that like bag. Yeah, being reborn. Like, they, just, they just don't give a fuck about her. They're like, here you go, just throw her in a fucking room, metal room, no bed. Fuck you. <laughs> Come on, man, get out of here. I'm trying to look at my notes here. Uh, sh- so you find out she's really strong, but she kind of has the mentality of a child because it's weird because they, she's being tested by the one of the doctors and she sounds like a child f- at first. Yeah, like she's you know it's like what is this and she's like. I don't remember what it, I think it was like a bird or something. She's like a bird. And then she like talks yeah. in like a very childish voice. What was the first one? Like hand or whatever. I mean, yeah, it was hand. Oh, she says no. Like, it looks like a blow up hand. I'm like, I don't blame her for saying, you know, for saying something what else. She said. Well, I mean, yeah. she's in theory that we know of been in like a tube her whole life until right then and there when they yeah. take the. I don't like when the doctor. Blow is. And looks at the scar when they're talking about the scar on her chest, and it's only been like what three days or whatever. And he's just like with her <laughs> gown that she's wearing. I'm like, Nip. yeah, Stop. dude. It's it's Stop. dude. It's it, this whole thing. It's, it's like a scientific. Stuff. It's I get what they're doing, but it's the whole scientific disconnect, right? Where you like you literally just treating it like a chunk of biomatter and they, there's no respect. I know that's what I'm talking. I'm not like, defending him what he's doing. I'm just saying that's what he's doing. He's, yeah. He like opens her gown and then he's like in her face. Oh yeah, I'm when sure. she when she like grabs uh, like wraps her legs around him. And and like, like please bite his nose, please bite oh, yeah. his nose. Literally tr- so like, only if it was Danny DeVito would that happen. Yeah. Carry on. And we've talked about it. Was, let's, just, let's just make a cut where it's Danny DeVito as Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> this whole fucking movie. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, man. So, but yeah, they figure out that she's growing her intelligence very quickly. And you see the general. He's very nervous about 
the fact is like, is she going to regain her memories? And he's like, ah, you know, at some point she's going to have to, re- she's going to remember something, uh, but it's probably not going to, you know, it might take a while. And he's like, no, she can't remember shit because the last, because if she remembers, she's just going to start killing everything. And that's not good for business. Business. Yeah. Yeah. So, they said it's like, uh, it's like genetic. Yeah. It's like genetic memory that's being yeah. carried through. And um, he pretty much is like, well, we need to terminate her. And, but the doctors end up talking him out of it. And we see the queen. They they see the queen. She's not very big yet. She's still growing, but it's really cool. You you kind of pan from like the mouth all the way, and then you see like the giant fan. Yeah, the big old crest. The crest, yeah, not cool. a fan. She looks crest. good though. The it really the, no. The, the practical aliens looks look good. really good. And to be honest, the CG aliens. I would rather take this like the the CG aliens from this than the rod puppets from Alien Three. That's that's all I'm gonna yes. say. No, I agree. I, I understand agree, that the limitation there was limitations in ninety two when they made that movie, but it this it just looks way better. So Ripley is talking to Brad Dorf. I can't remember what his name was in this movie. I oh, just fuck. I just kept calling him Brad Dorf. But he uh, get get him in. Get him in. Okay, I'm just gonna keep calling him Brad. Uh she's yeah. talking <laughs> she's <laughs> she's talking to it. him while she's eating dinner and she's regaining her memories. And she starts remembering about the xenomorphs and she pretty much gets told about the. She tells him about the queen. He's like, well, how the hell do you know that? He's like, yeah. if you don't get rid of it, you're going to die. Like, you're all going to die. It's like, ooh. And then Dr. Ren comes in and he talks to the fact that um, I found it funny since I'm a former employee of this company. But Waylon Yutani was bought out by Walmart. <laughs> yes. Good for you, Walmart. Just buying. They're buying everything. Damn. It's okay. Walmart and Disney buying everything. If this movie was made 20 years later, no, uh, 20 years later, it would have been Amazon that bought them out. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's, that's yeah, anything newer now. Any movies that have big companies that get bought out. And Dr. Ren also talks about, hey, you know, once we tame the xenomorphs, everything's going to be A-OK. She's like, yeah okay, you ain't taming shit. <laughs> I tamed you. It's like not quite what's yeah, going that's, on. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It's like no, not not really what we're doing. So then we meet the crew of the Betty, and the captain and his girl are horny as fuck. Like he quite literally. Oh god, there yeah, are some are. there are some lines that he says to her, and I'm like, I really, I mean. Clearly and she's really, into, clearly she's into it. So I that so it wasn't it was yeah. weird, but she but she seemed was, into it. So it wasn't as weird. Like he says things like, so "Since weird. your mouth is wet," I was like, "Yo, bro, me? can you there get the couple of can you get the ship into them. the dock first? Let's not crash the ship as she's well, giving us. Is this called is dock. this called Spacehead? I I fucking guess so. You <laughs> thought wants to make a space feed. <laughs> We're not judging people here. We're just no, making no, a no, joke no, no. about it. Yeah, it's in the movie, people. The it's move. It's he in does. the movie. It's like allow me to put my enterprise in the port, ma'am. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> so we then meet Call, played by one hour writer. She is hanging out with uh, Vrice, who at first you don't know that he's wheelchair bound, which I thought was a really cool introduction. How you find out that that he is? So he and he. He seems like a nice guy, but he he starts off with the worst line because he tries to tell a really tries to tell a lame sexual joke. Oh, what was the joke? I almost typed it. And I was like, I don't know if I want to say this joke. He probably doesn't have any experience. So, but we'll yeah, get it here in a minute. The one of the movies literally playing right here while you're all <laughs> are talking. While you're talking, it's just going. I should do I the do, same I, thing so I can fucking remember well, things. I just need to just write more things down. But whatever, that's just how this show goes. I'm not. Joe comes up, we'll let you know. Yeah, I do so, that a lot just because I can't remember everything that goes on. Even yeah. like when I do write notes down, I'm like, I'm shorthand, so I'm like, I don't remember. What you don't happened. remember what is going on my, here? I write too much. I have no, I write too much yeah. to the point where I I start falling behind. I'm like, oh, I gotta pause it so I can catch up with myself. Uh, also, I'm not the very fast typer. Uh, Dread, we may Christy, who I call Dreadman throughout this movie. 
He's got the cool retractable guns that are like attached to his arms. Yes, that's yeah. cool. And it comes into play later, which I thought was pretty cool. And then we got Ron Perlman who plays Johnner. I'd be yeah. a dick too if my name was Johnner. What a terrible name. I thought I honestly thought that Bryce during this scene when they dropped the thing off because I hadn't seen this in forever. I thought he was uh, a synthetic. Yeah, that that was another idea. But yeah, he drops. He's you know he's acting like a monkey. He's just being a stupid. He's just being a fool, and he drops a knife onto Rice's leg, and you find out that he's wheelchair bound. He can't feel it, but he's still pissed. He's like, "You dick!" And I like how yeah. how Johnner asks for the knife back, and one other rider just breaks it, and he yeah. flips out. He does. He's, he's like, just "Son did. of a bitch!" <laughs> you he's, don't get his joke. No, we didn't get his joke. We didn't okay. get his inappropriate joke. Well, maybe it's go. only in the direct. So in our version, he's come off as less than an asshole. I'm going to pull well, up quotes I mean, to see if they put it. Um, Elgin makes a him and his girl make a a joke. Yeah, so we didn't even get the thing with Elgin. Talk about bringing in a port. That's not on here. It's the second stuff after the <laughs> uh, Vre- uh, Rice gets the knife in the leg. He's like, come on, man, you didn't feel a thing, even though he could still technically bleed out. Yeah. You had a vein just right. Just because he guess, doesn't feel it doesn't mean shit isn't happening down there. I guess Bryce, uh, I guess it's just too much. I guess it's too much of a dirty joke. They can. Um, it's OK. I guess they didn't want to put that on IMDb. I'll right. pull up the PS4, and put this disc in, go watch a director's cut just to see this one fucking line. <laughs> oh, boy. So. You make me sad. I like jokes. We find out that the AI, like, computer that's controlling the um, Algira is father, not mother. Lame. Carry on. Yeah, they go through, like, a scan to make sure they don't have weapons on them. I like how. Ron Perlman gets scanned and he's like, he's got a thermos. He's like, I'm bringing my lunch. Yeah. yeah. And then Vries gets like, scanned. Uh, he's like, it's my own recipe or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. That. He's like, yeah, he gets scanned. He's like, do you want to scan the chair? And it's just like yeah. going off or some <laughs> shit. Like, so the captain, uh, Elgin, and the general have a conversation about their deal pretty much. They, you don't know what their cargo is yet. You see it in the next scene, but they have a deal of, you know, bringing cargo and all that. And then Elgin asks if he can stay, if the, him and his crew can stay on the ship for a few days. So we get, and then we get some weird locker room talk. This is the, like, I, I wanted to see more Elgin in this movie. I don't think he was in it long enough, but this scene just, I'm like, golly, they're just doing, they're just talking about dirty things about call. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I mean, to be honest, the general's really not into it. He's just kind of like, can you just kind of get the fuck out of here? Like, get, just get out of my room. But you see the mm-hmm. cool little whiskey cube? They like pour his water on yeah. it, turns into whiskey. I was like, what the? I was like, that's it's like, a bull- that's it's like, like the most future thing in this gone. movie, to be honest, though. It's yeah. pretty good. Because this movie does not feel like it's in like that much into the future compared to the no. other movies. Because you watch it and I'm like, what's going to happen? And you see it and I was like, huh? Oh, man. So the cargo is people. I wonder what they're going to be used for. Oh, green. Yeah, soil like green. This is what they're going to start. Soil green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this universe is going to be soil it brown. It's yeah. As he shits his pants and, as a face hugger gets onto his face. Yeah, it's never going to sell. They're going to sell the idea to Walmart. And then it's going to yes. be green. It's like it's yes, all yes, down yes, to the yes. color, dude. It's hilarious that Walmart's still around 200 hey, years later. Here's our alcohol bullion cube. Mm hmm. I thought it was so. It was. It's, it's a cool. Scene, it's a really dude. cool scene. But yeah, you as soon as you see the people in the cryo chambers, you know exactly what they're going to be doing with these people. Oh, oh, yeah. because I, I was like, do they steal people? Like, I mean, that's what my thought was. I was watching, like, do they fucking steal? people? So there's salvage. There's salvage crew. They're just like when when Ripley gets found in Aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I was gonna it's a nice connection. Same. Yeah. Yeah, same thing. But they were I didn't tasked. think about that until you mentioned that. So the so the Betty is pretty much pirates. Like they pretty much mm-hmm. are like this this vessel or the general was like, we're gonna pay you a shit ton of money to go find a ship that's in cryo because I guess you can tell and go steal some people. They probably have some kind of scanning equipment where they could like, oh hey, this ship has some kind of long range scanner. They could be like this ship's in autopilot and there's yeah. X amount of people in cryo. 
me and Parker's brain are on the same wavelength. We thought about that at the same time. What? About the being pirates? No, stealing people. That Could they have possibly done that in the last movie? Yeah, well, that's what we talked about, because these guys aren't on the level like the other people were. Like, oh, we can't salvage this because there's a live person on this. Yeah, they and weren't as much. They, they were more salvage people that had yeah, to report when pirates. they find people. The, the, the Betty are pirates. They don't give a shit if there's people. They're that was actually, that's what they're looking for. So, yeah, looking. yeah you know exactly what they're going to be used for. You see the next scene where they have the eggs inside the chambers with them. And I was like, that's fucked. I, yeah. I, I mean, to be honest... It's more fucked up because they let him wake up to right? then experience the face hugger going on. I mean, you never see any of them actually have the face huggers on them. You yeah. just know what happens. Wing long, oh, yeah. dude. Straight wing long. <laughs> Straight face wing long, right in your mouth. Uh, yep. Ripley and Ron play some basketball. This is the scene where she's very, she's just fucking with them, and it's yep. hilarious. You know, space basketball. I was like, damn, basketball is still this prominent this far into the space future? Jam. Damn. Space, <laughs> space Jam! <laughs> Space football. Space football. Ah, space football. Okay. Damn, what a mix of movies right there. All right. Basketball is now canceled. It's outlawed, so you have to play sk- basketball. Yeah. Space football. Yeah. So, yeah, she fucks with him. She, like, bounces it off his face, and then she ends up beating the shit out of most of the people, and the... She gets, like, bashed in the face with one of the... <laughs> with the... The, the weight bar. Yeah. And yeah, then... just takes it. Yeah, and then she, like, you know, she fights a couple of the, the crewmen, and then... She, you know, the doctors come in and stop the whole thing. And then she does the infamous behind the head shot, which she actually did. And there was a rumor. It's a rumor because according to Sigourney Weaver, it took a couple times to do it because because there was a rumor that she had done it on the first take. Which isn't true. I guess it took a pretty good amount of times to the point where the director actually wanted to. He was just like, you know what? We're just going to do CG on it. And as soon as he said that, I guess the next take, she drained it. And she's like, no, I got this. Then you find out that she's bleeding because she literally wipes her nose and then flings the blood on the floor and you find out that her blood is acid. Yeah, it doesn't seem quite as powerful as just straight no. alien blood, but it it's, still is acidic. It's not, yeah, it's not as fast acting. And then this is where we get the foot massage scene. Yeah. You get all them lady cheeks. I was at them- first, yeah, at first I was like, that's a weird way to get a foot massage. Then I was like, you know what? That's how I'd want to give a foot massage. You get a great view. Well, see, the thing is, is this scene, run, this scene al- there you go. <laughs> this scene alone is why 50% of OnlyFans accounts exist. It's Re- like how it's like, this it's, scene. Like, it's like how Space Jam and Sonic the Hedgehog introduced a whole generation of furries. No offense. I like fun of people. Y'all like what you like. Just say it. But this isn't even the weirdest like thing that happens in, the, in this over this like next five minutes. So yeah. we see the scene where uh, Johnner, Call, and Christy are all in the room. They're watching the QVC of the gun. They're getting drunk off like what tastes like battery acid because Call's like, what yeah. is this straight battery acid? He's like, this shit's hard to make. You yeah. enjoy like, what it. You put, what you, you do put that battery acid in this genre? <laughs> it's just for color. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then we're back hanging out with uh, Brad Dorif, who's checking out the new the new birds of xenomorphs. And this is where we get the weird fucking scene where he's like getting real up and close to that, that glass and he starts to kiss it. And I was like, whoa, bro, what is happening? Going back and watch, seeing some of these scenes go like with Brad Dorif, he's really good. Yes. With his face. I really enjoy. I actually thought he was good in this movie. He, I thought he was, was great. Like, I was, hell. During the surgery scenes, like it's just his little mannerisms he's doing during yeah. it. It's like they're it's really good. It's like a lot of people just wouldn't do. Yeah. It's a nice little touch. This is this was just so extra. Like him like doing the thing where God, like they you know, the xenomorphs fuck. up against a glass and he just kisses the glass. And then the xenomorph like shoots out the tongue and it scares the shit out of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you find out the xenos are they're they're learning shit real fast, like faster than they expected. And then that's when we get the whole issue with uh, Call spilling all the, the alcohol and Johnner's getting pissed. And then the other guy gets Christy. Christy gets pissed too because yeah. I think Johnner knocks the drink over on him. Like, what the hell, man? So we f- we see Call going on a little walk. And you're like, where is she going? Well, she's going to go pay a visit to Ripley and she's going to kill her or she at least try to kill her. 
but she doesn't end up doing it. And you find out that Call is actually there to destroy the xenomorphs. Like she knows that Ripley's there. She knows what this vessel is doing. And you also see like a weird side to this clone Ripley. She's really weird. And uh, yeah, she calls the xenomorph they pulled out of her. The mother or the, the queen is her, her baby. It's my baby. I was like, oh no. She knows she starts doing like, like, is this, is you talking about this, you know, when scene, when Cole goes into her cell, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like when she gets real up and close and it's like a lot like the alien three scene. Yeah. Where like she has those alien mannerisms to her at times. Yep. Pretty neat. I like that. I, I mean, I like the idea and sometimes it's done well and sometimes it's just kind of weird. So yeah, Cole gets caught after being in Ripley's room. Aquarium. Yeah. <laughs> the aquarium. <laughs> Ripley's aquarium. <laughs> And uh, then because she gets caught in that room, the entire crew of the Betty gets in trouble and pretty much is like, well, we got to kill her because she's a terrorist. So you're all just going to die for her. And they're like, ah, well, we just kill a bunch of you. And so they kill a bunch of the soldiers that are keeping them in there. Uh, But they don't kill the doctor. Because he's got to be our villain. And that's when we get the scene that Angela wasn't a big fan of, which is the Xenos inside the the, the cell needing that's to so figure out it get got to figure out a plan t- to get themselves out of the cell. So they decide we're going to sacrifice one of the Xenomorphs to use the acid blood to get the hell out. And Brad Dorf is continuously using the uh, the f- you find out it like freezes yeah, them, like but it doesn't shit, do shit. Agent. It doesn't do shit to the to the Xenomorphs. Yeah. Because literally he uses it, and then like the xenomorph is perfectly fine when it comes out of it, so it doesn't affect them at all. Well, I think it's enough to deter them because it's it's like when the, the he uses it earlier when he says they're a fast learner. Yeah, when it's yeah. trying to teach. Kind of think that maybe it wants him to think that it does something to it. Right. I, I don't believe it does, but it's not enough to kill. I mean, they don't want to kill it. Obviously, these things are extremely tolerant. To t- it can survive and. Deep space. Also, they're very which intelligent. Which we know they're very intelligent. They can survive in deep space. We've seen it fall into a vat of molten lead and not die immediately. Yeah. So they're very resistant to temperature. But I think it's just enough to like. It's like spritzing a cat with water or like yeah. rolled up newspaper bopping in a little bed or some shit. But then you get our cats and they're like, meh, it's just water. Whatever. Our cats don't do that. They fucking hate it. This guy <laughs> loaf does. But anyway. But yeah, oh, yeah. So, but it's a it's a good idea. I like how this scene was done. Yeah, I did too. I it's, you know, in the doctor or Brad Dorf tries to, you know, he goes into the cell to see, you know, where they are, and he gets dragged down to the depths of hell. You think he's yeah, dead? He his head. Yeah, you think he's dead, like, but maybe not. He'll never possess a haunt, a doll at this rate. No, yeah. he possesses a. He does the Abe do Dembala, fucking on a xenomorph becomes a xenomorph. Yeah. We need some more space, Dembala. <laughs> <laughs> Just the clouds form in space. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> There's not clouds. What? <laughs> Here. Stardust. The general is alerted about all the bullshit going on, and a soldier is freezed by the Xeno because one of the just a random guy just goes in there to investigate, and the Xenomorph's on the other side, like my turn, and uses its tongue to activate it, and then it freezes the guy, which is actually a pretty cool scene where the guy gets frozen to the wall and he tries to pull his arm and his arm gets ripped off. Oh. You know the head to hurt. Yeah, it was really cool. Well, me. He may not have felt it if it was frozen. Yeah, and this right. is where we get like the xenomorph roar, which we don't, we haven't heard before. I don't remember them making this type of noise in any of the other aliens. I know they make noise, but not like this. Mm-hmm. This was a legit like roar. So the yeah, ship, no. so that because the xenomorphs have escaped, the general has to evacuate the the ship, and you get way too long shots of just the people evacuating. I was like, this could have been cut down a little bit. I just people yeah. frantically like. Ah! Like, <laughs> what are we doing? And uh, Vries is all by himself because he's uh, he's taking some stuff. He's just you know mm, I'll take some of this. I'll take some of that. I'll take some of this. Guessing yeah, it's ammo it or something. It. Could be anything. Ammo supplies. Yeah. He's a technician. He's obviously yeah. seems like the the yeah the engineer for the ship. They use so. the anytime he is in a situation, they use him perfectly. So he first shoots a xenomorph, and the blood drips onto his leg. And of course, he can't feel it, 
but he he sees that it's burning so he grabs it and it starts to burn his hand and then it drips behind his ear and it starts to burn him but yeah he still continues to shoot but he's shooting at an angle where he's not shooting directly above him which i was like okay that's a good shot so it shows like even if he hits the xenomorph over here it's not going to drip on top of him yep and uh yeah this is you see the cgi xenomorph go into one the last escape pod and the general's like oh well shit i gotta throw this grenade Oh, dude, this scene, it looks so hokey, dude. It's, it's, I know what they were going for. It seems like a cool idea, but it's just the way it's done. I just don't, I just thought it was filmed very poorly, or at least directed poorly. Uh, you, you always got to get the scene, though, where like something like the creature goes into like a closed compartment, and then you just see the, the window and just blood splatters all over the window. Yep. You always got to have that shot. But then, oh, so yeah, you do. Yeah. I just made me think of uh, there's a scene like that in um, unrelated. Well, it is technically about space bugs. Uh, Godzilla, uh, Godzilla, Gamera two. Where it, where Legion? Going to say uh, Men in Black. Well, that too, but that doesn't happen. But there's a scene. This is this is a <laughs> PG thirteen movie. There's a scene where there's these bugs from outer space. Same thing. They land on Earth, but there's like a big bug to fight the giant turtle, and there's little ones, and they attack. They want silicon, so they attack people with radios, phones, anything like that. There's a scene where a train car gets attacked, and this dude sl- gets attacked by one of it. Cuts to him slamming his hand on the wall, and blood just splatters against the window. Mm. So I was just, that's just what that made me think of. But you're right. So yeah, the general, you know, he's like, everything's all good here, mission accomplished, and then a xenomorph. Comes up behind him and tongues him right in the back of the head, and then, this scene and then just he takes way too long. And then he reaches back there and pulls out a piece of his brain. I'm like, your brain's supposed to stay inside your head, General. No, stuff it back in. Stuff yeah, it back in. Uh, Put a band Yeah. Hannibal yeah, Lecter's like, like, I'll have that. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, that's what's good. Like, it, again, I get what they're going for, but this scene is just drawn out way too long. Him reacting to get hit in the back of the head. Yeah. I'm just like, that's not what your brain looks like either. It's green, right? It looked like a big <laughs> wad of bubble gum. <laughs> it did. It did. I was like, ooh, who's been chewing bubble gum? What is happening here? So this is my least favorite part of this movie. This is where Elgin is just out there looking for a problem. He's just wandering the fucking hallway. He's like, daddy, daddy, die. Ooh, weird noise. Let me go down to see that weird yes. noise. And yeah, he gets sucked into the floor and he gets the <laughs> tongue punched to the back of the to the back, it comes out the chest, and he's he's dead. And Dude, this scene reminded me of Tarkov. So if any of you have played Tarkov, no, no, I'm going to tell you why. Because he goes, he looks down the hallway and he's like, oh, there's a gun. So I'm thinking of Tarkov in James Woods. And he's like, oh, piece of candy. Takes the gun. <laughs> Ooh, oh, there's another one. piece of candy. Takes the gun. Gets to the little handgun. Grabs it. It's like got the slime on it. He's like, oh, piece of candy. And then he gets off. I was like, come on, dude. Yeah. This is such a waste of it. Like, this I character... wanted this to do something. Like, yeah. he's supposed to be the badass captain that either makes it to the end or dies at the very end, sacrificing himself yeah. for his crew, right? Yeah, but instead we got Ron Perlman. Um, which I like Ron Perlman, but I don't think he should have lasted as long. So, yeah, the, I agree. so they go down to like, oh, the, the other thing is I, I just didn't like how this entire scene was shot. You have him investigating alone, but you can hear the other crew members just off screen. There's like, Elgin, come on, Elgin. And it just goes on yeah. for too long. And, and he then he dies and everybody's like, ah! and of course, his girlfriend finds him first and he's dead. Yeah. And she's upset for about three seconds. And <laughs> this is the best kill. Of the, this, but then the best kill of the movie happens, which is uh, the xenomorph like walks by his body, but then comes back around and it's like looking at him. And then a gun pops out of his chest and shoots the xenomorph in the head. Yeah, and you find it's Ripley, one. and I was like, that's a cool kill. That's a cool that's, kill. Yeah, that's right a, there. That was a badass one. I do like that, but I hate his girlfriend. She there, she was really oh, upset about it. Elgin's girlfriend? Yes. Yeah, she's kind of useless. Yeah, she doesn't do much. Uh, except for she gets a really good foot massage. And shows some butt cheeks. That's about yeah. it. That's all she's she got some cheekers. She has a nice ass. Mm-hmm. She does. She, <laughs> I was, honestly, I'm surprised they weren't oiled in that scene. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was like half expecting everybody to just be greased up. Greased up that ham. Done a lot of squats in her life. Clearly. So, yeah, you find out Ripley's a badass. And you also find out there's 11 more xenomorphs on this ship. 
Because there was if you've not told. found no, out no, that I Ripley know. is a this, badass, but this is a different now, Ripley. Then, true, I know. Ripley's always been a badass. So. Yes, yes. Technically, there should have been ten. If there were twelve in total, oh, because the queen. Yeah. Well, no, no. Hang on. There's twelve in total. They, if they count the queen, if there's mm-hmm. just twelve of the standard xenomorphs. Yeah. There's the one that they all teamed up to kill to get out, and then the one Ripley killed. So there's ten left. Remember what? the Xenomorphs killed each other? They, they oh, killed the one. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The okay, you're right, you're right. Yeah, so there's, there's eleven more. there's eleven more Xenos on the on the ship. She says there's twelve in total, but you know, she probably doesn't know about the other one as well. Yeah, she does. She wouldn't know about that. Yeah. She hadn't seen that. So and she also takes the tongue as a trophy. She's like, What are you doing? Because Call's like, What are you doing? She's like, eh, you know, just taking a trophy. I was like, I'd yeah. probably do that too. The tongue's pretty cool. The only the only thing that sucks, like you're sticking your hand in its mouth. It could have some blood in there and just melt your hand. It's oh, like right. it's like the dude from the Mummy Returns who sticks his hand in that hole and it comes out and he's like, ah! yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but cloned Ripley shouldn't That's be true. affected. That's true. Technically, in theory, be affected. That's true. Depends on how much of that hi- or hybrid sat- status covers that. So, <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I don't thought, know. I'm, are we talking about an insurance like, policy here? I was gonna say, I mean, we can if you want to. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So Vreese rejoins the crew. Yay, he's back. I like this character. I don't care. I, like I was Vreece. very happy to see like him back. Uh, they find out that the ship has been autopiloting, autopiloting, words are hard, towards Earth since the attack happened. It's like, well, when was somebody going to tell us that? It's like, well, that's just how it works. And they're like, yeah. well, how long until we get to Earth? They're like three hours. I'm like, wait, you were that close to Earth? Okay. Uh, because I guess this was the... This was like a defense mechanism for the ship to bring back the xenomorphs to Earth. Is like you don't want to bring those back to Earth. That's not a good idea at all. That's what everybody it's like. But Walmart wants to owns do. them. Walmart. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Walton, the forty fifth, wants us to bring him back. <laughs> those bastards from Bentonville, Arkansas. <laughs> They just There's no the, more the logo in the corner <laughs> the whole time it's playing. At this point, because Walmart bought them out, like the entirety of North America, Amer- uh, the United States, and Canada is just called, um, fuck, <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> it's just <laughs> Alabama now. Alabama. Oh. <laughs> it's just the, okay. it's, the it's oh, just Lord. Alabama. This is one. Of, this is one of the best scenes in the movie. And this is actually the one of the scene. This is the scene that convinced Sigourney Weaver to join the movie other than the fact she got paid a lot of money and that is she finds the cloning lab with all of the failed creations and um, this is another scene that also takes a little bit too long to kind of get going because it literally shows Ripley look at this door for felt like 10 minutes and they're like Ripley and all you hear in the background is Ripley come on we gotta go Ripley we gotta go Ripley yeah. come on we, we can't we, we can't say I was like oh my god can this scene just go like yeah. somewhere and then she opens the door and then we're like, all right, this is cool. You see all the weird, grotesque creations where it's like mm-hmm. xenomorph head, but with human body or human body with like xenomorph body. I was like, oh, my God, this was really cool. And then you see she goes around the corner and she sees one that's still alive. And it's her on a bed. It's at, like her arms are all and she's just like, kill me. Help me. Kill me, please. No. Arm on the Looked right like chicken wing side. Yeah, it literally was a it was a wing. It was a featherless I, chicken wing. <laughs> so weird. My it's, favorite one though is the one. Let's see if I can find it. Not the one with the mouth and the extra the mouth. mouth. It's the one. Yeah, this one with the whole body is like. The xenomorph like exoskeleton. It's like human but it's flesh. Like human flesh. And yeah. It's like up, up the leg and up the side. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. It's I got to the face and then I was like, mm. yeah, they're, they're, yeah. um, they were weird, but they were really cool at the same time. Did we mention that she was number eight? Did we yes. mention that? She yeah. Was she's eight? Ripley okay. eight. Yeah, she's- and, um, but yeah, so the, uh, I mean, the way they got this shot was they had the, the body was an animatronic and it was just Sigourney Weaver's head in a, t- like underneath yeah. the table. <laughs> Yeah. Help me. It did a good job. Kill it was me. it was a good it was a good scene. The and whole then, thing. I mean like you said, it took a little bit to get going, but, it was but if you didn't know it was her other than it looking like her, I mean the chest yeah. scar should have given it away. And of course we gotta get the flamethrower. 
She sets this I mean, bitch ablaze. Yep. Again, why are we using flame flowers on a ship in space? <laughs> this is a bad idea. Head. Yeah, there was, had to this, have it. This, there was this huge conversation about not shooting because putting a hole through the hull. And but that that quickly they, gets discarded see, in this movie. It's yeah, so a less humane way of taking her out because oh, yeah. she wouldn't die immediately. No, she's, she's burning, burning alive. alive. Like it's awful. How could you have not just like taken something, put it up to her head, shot, and got it over with? That would have been easier. But yet she's tortured with this whole thing yeah. because she has to light her on fire. It's a really good scene, though. Is Gorney Weaver kills it with yeah. the emotions oh. in this in this scene. Yeah, it's it's a good scene. It's very. She good. kills the emotion in pretty much. Oh yeah. I, in any scene. She oh, can. she can just like switch between being like the badass, like I no one's gonna fuck with me to like, what the hell have they yep. been doing? Yep. But it also shows just the the pure evil of this research vessel because like you know you see the things that they've been doing, but it's like. Yeah, is it bad that they're breeding xenomorphs? It's terrible. This is a bad idea. But like, then you see this, and you're like, these guys are monsters. These are yeah, awful it, people. And she, and she, after she burns the room down, she confronts Ren. But uh, Call pretty much convinces her not to kill, you know, not to kill him. She's so in control of that emotion. She could yeah. have literally just lit the whole ship on fire. Yeah, yep. she and just walked out of there out. and just snapped and Ren's neck out. and just been like, "We're done." See you yeah. later, guys. But instead, Call Which... makes the call uh, to uh, yeah, not jokes. kill him, and then he continues to do stupid shit. But then we get the the, the line from Johnner, who says, "I don't get it, man. Waste of ammo must be a chick thing." Oh yeah, it's just Johnner being insensitive as fuck. But what she does it fits his character. I wish. So Just they, because of his comments that he made. They discover the room of sacrifices from the cargo that the Betty brought. But then they find just a random guy who's still alive. I guess the xenomorph hasn't popped out of his chest yet. But she but Ripley tells him real quick what's inside of him. And he's like, yeah. oh, great. But I love it, though. And like yeah. he is sitting there going, what's inside? Because she's like, there's something inside of you. What's inside me? And he asks it like 10 times, but no one will answer him. And he's like, what's inside? What's in fucking inside me? Yes. And so Ripley tells him. they're all arguing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Ripley tells him exactly what it is. And he goes, well, who are you? And she goes, I'm the monster's mother. And I was like, that's a, that's a good line right there. Yeah. That's a good line. Well, I guess that that uh, xenomorphosis is a little bit longer in the oven. So, hey, you you. So when you get pregnant, you never know when baby's coming. They tell you what you know average time is, but you know could be early, could be later. It's true. That's it's very true. true. To stay, it's warm. So they need to travel through the ship in ways that Vries can't use his wheelchair. So he's got to be strapped down to the back of Christy. And they got to go down into these cooling tanks that are filling up with water. And so they get to go for a swim. And there's in a the kitchen. Yep. And there's a quick conversation between. um, What the hell is his name? It's the 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 soldier there. Despa. Despacito. Gotcha. That's what I was about to say. Despacito. Despacito. Des 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 yeah, that guy. And. Des they, him and uh, Christy have the conversation about the um, disposables. I guess it's a gun that can shoot under. They're like, they're really good. They're really like sleek too. Also, I forgot to mention back in the scene where they're um, being held because Call got caught with Ripley and he te they tell Christy to put on his guns. He's like, I can't. Like, they're attached to me. I can't put them down. Yeah. yeah. Then you get the cool See ricochet shot. I like Christy because Christy reminds me of the ones from Lego um, Star Wars where you have to find the ricochet point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In your missions. Yep. That's Han Solo and uh, Chewie do it. So they encounter some xenomorphs under the water. And I actually like these shots of the, 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 the oh xenomorphs swimming. I, I, I thought it was like cool. This. Yeah, they kind of. 
I'm like holding my breath as it's going. I'm like, yeah. oh gosh, I gotta breathe. You know they have to breathe. This is one of the scenes I very vividly remember from what seeing as a kid. Like I I walked downstairs, you know, when my parents were watching this. I yeah. very vividly remember this. Apparently Ron Perlman almost drowned. Almost drowned. Almost drowned. Yeah. I'm like, I don't blame you. I blame yeah. too. And uh you get a cool rocket shot from underwater by Johnner. Oh yeah, that, that blows it. I like how the one avoids it, and the other one's like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> Let's blow yeah. This up. Yeah. But no, not Elgin's girl. Not that. That Zeno wanted her booty cheeks. He's like, "That guy got her." My turn. She's like, no. I knew. I knew what was gonna happen though, because she's like, she didn't want to go under in the first place. No. She's like. She's like. She's like. Prepping no. herself. Like I can hear, you can hear her just making the noise. Like, yeah. well, and then all, and then also, is it ironic that she got grabbed by the foot? Is this like, is this supposed to be like a callback? But dude, honestly, like, my she turn had... to give you a good foot massage, yeah. baby. <laughs> Lamest. I know how to foot massage you. I got right. these big old claws. <laughs> I get those little little feet. It's mm. getting like salad <laughs> fingers. <laughs> Rusty spins. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So what I was gonna say is she has the lamest fucking kill. Yeah, she just dies off screen she's pretty just, much. Just yeah, like, which is it was so slow water. too. They did it like slow motion. She gets like sucked in. Like we're supposed to <laughs> care. Like, oh, look at all this well, character development. Well, the yeah, thing yeah. is, is she they don't kill one of the worst ones. I, I don't think she. So like a lot of the people, they don't die initially. They always get sent to be like part of the. Yeah. Part of the whole yeah. like nest or whatever yeah. it is. To yield uh, more alien. Mm-hmm. And so they finally make it to like this membrane section and it's and you of course you see them trying to bust through it and then you see all the eggs above it. And you're like oh not a good idea probably should go somewhere else. And then Ripley's like ah, I'm a Terminator and just rips it open and then immediately gets a face hugger to the yeah. face. Yep she did it's true. See. Wing wong. Um, Somebody had to get it. Elton's mm-hmm. girlfriend has enough space. They probably could have laid a few eggs. It's all in her booty cheeks. <laughs> two in the cheeks. Yeah, that's right. One in the chest, two in the cheeks. Boy, did you imagine listening to our show and all the booty cheek talk? Hey, Maybe you worse than anything else feet. we talk about. So, yeah, we get another ricochet shot by Christy with the rockets, or with the grenades, I guess, and... um it blows up the eggs. One of them actually goes in an egg, and then the other one lands next to it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it just like eats it. Mm. Is this a, is this a basketball? Egg. Was that a basketball reference? <laughs> was this a callback? I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know. So you get the scene where they escape up the ladders, and Ren can't get the door open, so he asks Chris. Or he asks um, call for a gun so he could shoot it, but then he's like, "Oh, you're too trusting." And then he shoots Call, and you're like, no, not, not Winona Ryder! Ryder! And this is when Christy gets a face full of acid, because the xenomorph spits acid in his face, and, comp- and and when you get hit in the face with acid, your entire body just goes limp, because he yeah, just becomes so- the most I useless mean, person. Really? I mean, I understand really? it's probably the it's excruciating pain, but you just, your body, you just become useless? Like, you're now relying on this man who can't use his legs, naturally in life to then hold on to you as you're just like ah. I figured he's probably went into shock or something something that something explainable but I yeah. mean Reese redeems himself by holding on so so I, I don't I, I just I just hate the whole scene like dude you're fine. You will be. You will eventually. I, know. I did be not fine. like. I didn't like yes. how he reacts after it. I know it hurts, but come on. Did, like, did it hit? Did it, yeah. Did it hit some nerve that just completely paralyzed him? Like I was so confused. But then, well, like you see, his eyes are two different colors, so maybe he can't see out of that uh, eye. That, yeah, maybe, that could be. Maybe he's like. True. Maybe he's like me. He can't see out of one eye. And yeah, you can't see anything. But stop your arms and fucking legs from working. <laughs> I know he's just like, like oh, down. oh no. Right. But then, like, hey, but hey, then no, Johnner no. hangs upside down, which Ron Berman did himself. <laughs> and but he's shooting he at the have... xenomorph, and he stopped. <laughs> he's not hitting any of his shots. They're all no, just going to the right yeah. or left to the xenomorph. Not even remotely. Like the way he's going, <laughs> there's no way he could hit him. 
He would hit the, you know, Christy and... Oh, it's hilarious. Also, uh, Ron Perlman fucking destroyed his knees. I doing heard about this, that. Doing this shot because he, yeah, he did pretty much all of his own stunts in this movie. I mean, I could see, I mean, he's hanging by his legs yeah. on the rungs of a ladder. Yeah, it's not again, easy. can we just mention, he shoot, ends up shooting the xenomorph in the head and it's dangling off of Christie's foot. Christy, move your goddamn foot just a fucking inch. Just wiggle like it a little said. bit. This it's not glued on. on. Just Instead, yeah. he sacrifices himself. And to be honest, he, what? He falls into the water and just dies? Like, what are you talking about? You know, there's nothing else in the water. Christy's death the was the aliens. worst death in this movie. Yeah. Hands down from start to finish. I liked this character a lot. And his death was awful. It was so bad from start to finish. You're like, what is go? This makes no sense. Can we talk? Someone explain this this to me. Someone in the comments or any anywhere, just in the uh, go to dissect that films DM. Email me at dissect that film at gmail dot com and just explain to me what the fuck is the reasoning behind. Right, you can call me out on Twitter. Damn. Tell me about it. But can we can we discuss this scene where Ron Perlman shoots the fucking spider? Oh my god, I know. Like, You're fighting a xenomorph <laughs> that's probably, you know, the same oh size as Lord. you, if not larger. And you see the spider that's like this big, you're like, oh, Jesus. Shoot it. <sighs> like, like, come on. That's the least of your worries at this point. So Call is alive. And they're like, Yeah. Where'd you come from? And uh, that's when Ripley discovers that Call is an android because she's got the milky milks inside of her. And she like digs in. Oh, she fucking. (laughs) I'm like, can she gets real deep in there? I was waiting. I was waiting for. I was waiting for Call to go. Oh, oh, sorry. (laughs) Here's another thing. No, I was waiting. Oh god. Let me rewind for a second. Rewind for a second. After the whole thing with Ron Perlman nukes the the xenomorph and it's just you know super glued to christy's foot <laughs> like how nobody even attempts to go down the ladder to right help. they're just watching all this happen as 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 <laughs> Reese is like i don't have legs that work i'm hanging this guy on my back yeah my arms are fine we got that's this. all so bad oh this Uh-oh. is the funniest scene of the fucking movie i'm sorry <sighs> so yeah He's he's like hanging on and his whole body is shaking. He's like, I can't hang on. They're like, you're fine. Yeah. So this is when you get, you know, of course, everybody's reacting to the fact that calls a android and. She is probably the most human. Of any of the androids we've seen for she's even more human than Bishop and Bishop was pretty damn close. And um, yeah. We also got to think it's 200 years later. They've had a lot this of time was, to perfect that. So she's an android that was built by an android. As they said. But Dude, the, okay. This this whole scene where she sticks her where Sigourney Weaver sticks her fingers. Mm-hmm. She has all 10 of her nails. I know they're long. Pointy. Like, wait, Just, wait a minute. <clears throat> I you know, I work retail and I can't even keep mine for two days and she's gone fighting aliens and she and there is keep just, her, her nails. There's just so much sexual shit in these movies. Uh, but uh, yeah, the it whole really thing. is. Yeah, she yeah. goes. She Yeah, it's yeah. not subtle. It's not like, you know, wipe away. There's some white milk. Nah, it's. Just yeah, they call it this. <laughs> <laughs> You find out. Oh my god. No. Never mind. No, Dad. No. Oh no, I wasn't gonna make a scene. I was not gonna <laughs> say scene in. She's I was gonna go into bed like No, because they call they call them autons. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I forgot they gave they gave them that name. Toast no, she's a like, toaster oven. They give yeah. no respect oh, you're gonna for get her a, whatsoever. It's like uh, you, you get a Johnner's stupid line where he's like, you know, maybe she needs to get an oil change. And I would, and I and and yeah. you know I I almost fucked her Wait, and and that's when it? Vries is just like yeah because you it's not like you've never fucked a robot before right I was gonna say uh the, it? it reminded me of um, socket wrench maybe she just needs an oil change right I was thinking of like 
It's like the icing you put on top of cinnamon rolls you make from the can. That's what I was thinking of. Oh my god, yeah. so delicious! Lula, Lula I don't care. Not make a I don't care what it looks like. It's so delicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Ripley needs her to uh, access the mainframe before Ren uh, to blow up the ship before it makes it to Earth. She isn't a fan of this because she doesn't like doing the android part of her job. But she does. And I like how she's like, it's like a USB in her arm. Just pick. Yeah, she pulls her mole out. Yeah, and she's able to override it's father and kind of project her voice throughout the ship, which I thought was cool. And um, she she determines that she can't blow the ship up, but she can crash it. Yeah, because she's like, they don't have, we don't have enough time to. Uh, um, to hack into it, to make it go and then Ripley's like well then crash it yeah so I'm like oh okay we also get the like Ren is trying to access the is trying to get to the Betty and he can't because call is able to control the doors and I love it when you know he's trying to talk to father's like father's not here right now and then and then it's like uh, there's uh, unauthorized access on level one it's like all aliens (laughs) probably Go to level one, please. Yeah. <laughs> like the xenomorphs are like, oh, what else, guys? <laughs> just, just goes off. Somehow Fucking I can galloping. understand this. Somehow I can understand English. Let's go, everybody. <laughs> Let's go. All right, but that the port <laughs> that she used to get to access looked like a freaking tampon strain. I'm like, why? Maybe oh, I didn't. I didn't get that one, but all right. Maybe, well, maybe synthetics is I decided like a tampon string is the most efficient. Oh, <laughs> and then she pull she pulls it out, and then it's like a string like this long that comes out of her arm. And I'm yeah, like, it's the is, I thought that was the cord that she plugged in. No, oh, what she pulls out first before she accesses that. Um, that whole shot looks good though, the like her arm oh, where yeah. the thing goes in, like it like it looks legit. It looks like she's really pulling something out of her arm. Mm. I don't know when she puts the plug in, too. But it still like, looks like a tampon. So, so Call tells Ripley why she's there. You know, she was pretty much sent there to kill Ripley and to destroy all the xenomorphs. And she asks, a, she asks Ripley about, like, does she remember her past life? And she, she does. She, she talks about Newt without mentioning her by name because she can't remember her name. But she pretty much is like that. I had there was a girl and she died, and I can remember everything about her, that's but her not, name. That's not. I was going to say that's, that's not. not you, you said Newt, and I couldn't remember her name, and I'm like, wait a minute. Well, well, she probably she didn't could, say Newt. Weapon. She never says it because she can't remember Newt's name, but she talks yeah, about yes. her. No, yeah, she. We don't mention. even get that. It's ma- even- it's mainly just them talking about Call's character and how she has to do this. She doesn't want to, like, but you can, even if you could kill them, kill them all, just give us enough time to get out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's like, don't blow it up until we get out. Yeah, and that's what Ripley yeah, talks no. about, that she, that she, uh, that's all she dreams about is xenomorphs. I don't think she mentions that either. No, I don't think we get any of that. I kind of like that they mention that, because that's kind of relevant to her character still, yeah. even though it's... Yeah, that would be kind of cool if they would have put that, like, right, right about here. Mm-hmm. So Johnner gets put in his place again. He almost gets his tongue ripped out by Ripley, and I love how he looks at Call. He's like, uh, "You want another souvenir?" Yeah, yeah. Like at this point, I wish she would have ripped his tongue out, just with all the stuff that he said. Yeah. And then Ripley gets dragged down into the nest. All of it that they're they yeah. look through the they look through the hole and they just see her kind of like lounging on top of just. I was like. It's the best waterbed in the galaxy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so and then she just and then she just gets you. sucked. Yeah, she just gets sucked in. And then you get a very seductive scene of like a xenomorph clearly carrying Ripley, but like hugging her, like she's like embracing him as like it's carrying her through the tunnel to get to the queen. It's so it's so um it's so nice, like so gentle. Just he's just carrying. She's like rubbing and like hugging him and. So weird. It's cute. Apparently, she she didn't want that scene. The execs didn't want that scene in. There was that, that scene. There. Yeah, they they didn't want anything like that. It seemed sexual with it with any of the xenomorphs, and she was like, "If you cut that scene, I'm gone." That's kind of the point of the xenomorphs, is it not? Yeah, 
Exactly. Especially, especially with Ridley being a special case. Like, she mm-hmm. is, you know. She's... So, they all make it to the bridge of the Betty, and early, a little bit earlier, we had the survivor. I, I don't know if he ever had a name, but he was the guy who had the, he's got the chest burster inside of him that they find, and he starts to kind of react, and they're like, oh, shit, and he's like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. But Purvis. then, yeah, so then he, we get to the bridge, and he gets shot by Ren, and it activates the chest burster. I love and he's just getting shot and he's just going crazy. And this is where we get the really this is I mean, there's no way this isn't some sort of sexual innuendo here because he grabs onto Ren and the chest burster bursts through his mouth. Like it goes through his chest, through the back of Ren's head out of his mouth. And I was yeah. like, and that's, that's cool. something, right? Well, it kind of from a from a point, it yeah. kind of makes sense that if Purvis's character here got shot, that uh if if the if the chest burster was far enough along and it sensed that it was dying, that would try to get out of the body I to, to sustain itself. It's like forehead. It's about that. It's his face. <laughs> but still, but just, yeah, just, it was like his face. Yeah, it gets and like, fucking destroyed. I, it's a great kill. I love the whole scene where he's like trying to bash his head in. Yeah, on the side of the ship. But it's so great. He just picks okay. him up. He's just like, ah, and it just, pfft. and then they yeah. shoot it so to make sure that that, yeah. Like yeah. This, I think it was yeah, too. I, face. But like, dude, that was like, you can just see the whole face just. The purpose gets lit the fuck up. Oh dude. yeah, he gets destroyed. Yeah, like, mm. So we are down in the queen's lair and we find out that Brad Dorff is still alive. What? No. And you find out that this queen isn't laying eggs. But where did those other eggs come from? I don't know. Well, he he just said she was laying eggs originally, but then, and then it became she a change. Yeah, yeah. And that's when we get probably the most controversial creature in this fucking franchise, and that is the baby Xeno. The babe. I, I don't know what I called it. The skull face xenomorph. I guess it's called <laughs> everywhere where I looked. It's just referred to as the newborn. Okay. I don't like it. I I, I it. It's if weird. If you to look creepy and weird, this thing fucking nails it. Yeah. I love the design of the queen in this. I love like her up, her, her up, yes. like her, her arms are too wiggly down below. It's not a whole lot you can. <laughs> but do she's with a bug, her. man. It's got like those long, but, like flaily no, her arms. arms. Her arms are going in the opposite direction of what they should be. They're like yeah, they're like splayed back like this, and they don't look like they could ratchet forward like you see her in Alien Two. How they are built. Did you just call it Alien the... 2? Aliens is. It okay. is Alien 2. It's the second Alien. Aliens is. Aliens, <laughs> I meant. Face and her crest. But what's her big arms? I Like her primary... She was definitely have... way different than the queen from Aliens. The head's about right, but the, the, the body She's not as big. She's not... I don't even think she's remotely as big as the queen from Aliens. The, the queen but in Aliens is massive. Everything past yeah. this, I mean, I'm like... Yeah, this was when it got real weird. And yeah, yeah, uh, so weird. the the newborn just rips the freaking queen's upper jaw off, kills it. And um, it's like the whole top of her face. Yeah, it just like, rips it right off. And then just like is like, all right, it's my turn. Why? Uh, the thing I don't understand is is during this. See, this is I, the concept. Yes. Is interesting. I get what they're going for. Yeah, the execute. I, I don't mind the design because it's creepy and weird and looks gross, and that's cool. If that's what you're going for, bam, they nailed it with this fucking design. And when it happens, he's like, oh no. Because it's got no. like, it's got eye sockets and they're super recessed, but there's fucking eyes. You can back see there. eyeballs back there. Yeah. yeah. It's weird as shit. And it, you can see it blinking. But it's got yep. like humanoid style teeth. Yep. Like and it doesn't human- have the, it doesn't have the xenomorph tongue. It just has a tongue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and it's got, like, what looks like but should be part of a nose. Like, it should connect, but it's just open. And there's, like, that little flap. Like you, it's you not having that that nose. It's cartilage and... Yeah, it's it's skull. It's a skull. It's it's just a, it's a skull face. That's why yeah. I call it the skull face xenomorph, because it's literally what it looks like. Yeah. It's but a weird-ass design, man. For. I, I don't thing. hate it, but it just it throws this movie into a weird... But, I mean... 
I guess it shouldn't throw it off into that weird of a direction because you see that they've been cloning, Mm -hmm. you know, Ripley with the Xenomorph DNA to get these creatures. And this is just another one. This is, this is all this is. This is just another clone because they've just been using the queen as a way of giving birth to all these things. Yeah, and it's and it's this thing reminds me a lot of what we saw in the tubes. She doesn't want to look in the i seven office with, yeah. with the other with the yeah, like that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, but the thing is though, what I don't understand is why. I I, I get the fact that when they mixed Ripley has part of the alien, like she's stronger, she's faster, she's got senses that she shouldn't have, mm-hmm. like where she just kind of like gets close to things like like they have that extra sensory perception that humans don't normally have why is the newborn like freakishly strong it doesn't make any sense and why is the only thing the xenomorph queen get from ripley was that she eventually got a womb yeah you would you would assume that the alien the newborn would be weaker because it's going to take on attributes of humanity, which are not as strong as the xenomorphs. Yeah. But if they can control what she gets with the cloning process, which should, in theory, they should be able to give it the stronger attributes. Well, I mean, clearly... Maybe they can't control what it looks like, but they can control what it gets as far yeah, as... Yeah, well, clearly strength. they can't control what it yeah. looks like because they failed many times. In the way yeah, and especially... I mean, especially it's, that, like, the oh, the whole scene where it licks her face. Yeah. Like, well, especially... It, it goes, oh, he recognized you as its mother. I mean, yeah, well, with, with eight... With uh, the, her being the eighth experiment, clearly this isn't, like, the final product it was intended to be because Ripley yeah. wouldn't act this way, for yeah. one. Yeah. She wouldn't still have her memories. So this is all... Literally, literally this is just some fruition of the experiment that's just not perfected yeah yes weird design though yeah so ripley gets recognized as the mom so she gives her a little licky licky and Uh, uh, then brad gets his head ripped in half fucking bites his head but this was also i this was the voiceover before we see the birth of the of the newborn is the voiceover of brad dorif where you see he's still alive and then he's talking about the whole fact that it was laying eggs and now it's a womb and you're like chucky is that you (laughs) because it's it's i mean it is just his voice but it's hilarious i'm like it's literally chucky just commentating on this birth of a weird ass alien so ripley makes it to the betty after she escapes from the newborn now there is literally no cgi with this with the newborn it is all practical probably for the best yeah and uh the newborn makes it onto the betty Destapado gets his head squished because he gets sent down to check on Call because Call is she's got to go um, because when Ripley made it on the door didn't shut all the way so that means the newborn ended up getting on and then Call gets sent down to close the door but she runs into the newborn which then Destapado gets sent down to go figure out what the hell's going on and yeah he gets his he gets grabbed by the, the newborn and literally just has his head squished it's it's a really quick cut, but I, I like the effect of the head getting squished. The hatch yeah. is enclosed. We can't take off if the hatch is enclosed. Yeah. Close the hatch. And like, as soon, yeah, on. and it was as soon as, I think it was as soon as Destapado dies, that's when the hatch closes? The, the alien, the alien, uh, the newborn closes it. It pushes it shut. Yep. Oh, I missed that. It's like, I'm going for a ride with you guys. Like, you see Call trying to close it with a crowbar, and that's when baby shows up mm-hmm. yeah no yeah yeah it's actually it's actually before it pulls uh despacito shows up because it's what calls back there she's got her back against it with the the newborn it, it just grabs the door and just pulls it right she is it you know what that is the song despacito yes yeah it's on the it was on the radio all the fucking time like you couldn't get away from it it's when ripley gets really weird with it she gets very like rubbing its face it and stuff weird. but it's all to distract it because she actually she has blood on her, her own blood, and she throws it at the window, which then starts to burn the glass to the point where it then opens up a giant hole. And uh, this is where we get the weirdest and longest death of anything in this movie, probably or in this yes. franchise, is when the newborn gets sucked out of a hole about this big. It's like 
like it's like not even baseball. It's probably size. like two inches in diameter. This thing is tiny and it's just slow. My wife was laughing mean? the entirety of this death. She was like, what it, the hell is this? It shows you the human emotions that this yeah, it's xenomorph like, can have. It's like where Ridley has her flashes of being a xenomorph. It's like you'll see scenes of this newborn doing it. Yeah. Like where it was when, when um, Call's hiding in that little piece of equipment. And it's trying to grab her. Yeah. And then it'll stop. And it's just cuts in a different uh, expression on his face and kind of a moat. Differently, yeah. Like, please help me. Well, yeah. well, if and if you watch this movie with the subtitles on, the newborn actually goes, "Oh no, no!" Seriously, it talks. Yeah, yeah, I know it makes noise and shit. I was like, this "I was is like, fun. what?" That made it so much weirder as it's dying, and it's like you could see the the the, the, the it's terrified as it's literally having its body just sucked through this tiny hole. And then and it, it's almost like a lava lamp. Yeah, like, that's what I I look at it like. It's like and, dude, my daughter walked in while this. Is oh all my happening, lord, like, that is that like, is traumatizing. She's like, she's like this. I was like, Sarah, it's fine. I'm that sorry. Traumatizing. Like, not, Holy shit. I you they're not normally like this. <laughs> and it was when they were in the um, underwater, the underwater scene. She's like. I'm like, just go on. Like she's, I know she's, she's gonna get scared. She's genuinely interested. Until somebody starts getting hurt. Yeah, yeah like she, she like seeing people get hurt. She wants to see it. Like she wants to know what's happening because she's curious, but she's also scared. And we have to assure her a lot of times, like this one, we're like, these creatures aren't real. And it's like, yeah, it's just a movie. This like, is just what me, they do. Have you ever, <laughs> are there really aliens? I was like, well, <laughs> not like this that we know, you know. Do we need to get into this? This philosophical conversation. Right. <laughs> the newborn's really tall. Yeah, it's it's huge. fucking huge. But the fact, but it really made it so uncomfortable. With like, like if it's die, like it getting sucked out of the window was one thing. But the fact that it literally is screaming, "Oh no, no!" And I was, I was like, I was, "Oh I was, no, hell!" Table. But no, I was half expecting Rick Ripley to try and save it. Yeah. She, she looks like because she's. I think she's still battling that xenomorph she's side of it. Having that conflict in her head, like that's what she gets. It, and then I'm like, she's not gonna because she has that look on her face. Like, mm -hmm. no, I can't. No, because she rubs her. She rubs her hand inside the baby's mouth, and it it cuts her hand open. Oh, that's, when she that's sees right. Blood. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't intended to do that. She's just trying to love on it, and she cuts her hand by mistake. Start like penny sized and, and then, then it just like, cracks somehow just goes Whoa. yeah well i mean it's it's I, I i don't know how all this worked but this is like very dramatic decompression yeah. so i mean it's uh, it's not like a it's not like a cabin on a plane this is like a cabin in, a, in an area that's already a fucking vacuum but see the blood's gone the the drip down where it dripped uh, all the yeah. way to the bottom it's gone interesting Oh, this is where we're like the pipe, we're like Twister. Quick, strap onto the pipe. How deep do these pipes go? Like it's Twister in space. <laughs> we're literally, just literally what we were talking about. When we watched the movie. I mean, that movie came out the year before a year before this one. So, because well, I know the writer's character called straps herself in. Yeah. And was like, Whoa. we also see the very weird CG pieces of the new board flying through space. <laughs> So we then see that the uh, Ar Ariga crashing into the Earth. Yeah, it's nasty. And the Betty goes through Earth's atmosphere, and they make it. And yeah. Johnner smooches Vrice. Big old smooch. Big old Ron Perlman smooch. And uh, Earth is not looking great, by the way. Earth looks pretty shitty. You see, we're in Paris, Wait, and Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. Yeah, he gives he gives rice and he, like give him a smooch on the cheek. Oh or no, whatever. he kisses him on the lips. That was another version. Yeah, he literally grabs him by yeah, the head, side of the face and gives him a big old kiss. Right there. Oh, that's right there. Yeah. That's right there. He's like grabs him by the neck and he's like. Yeah. Bryce is just like. Oh. <laughs> and he looks the, like he needs a stiff drink. <laughs> yeah, and this is the first time <laughs> Ripley do. we ever see Ripley on Earth. Yep, that's true. This is actually the first time we ever are on Earth in this franchise. It's only for, you know, 30 seconds, but we also see the Earth is in rough shape. We see the Eiffel Tower in the distance. It's crumbling. The whole 
all of Paris is looking not so good. We, we, I don't. We don't get that in our version. Well, nope, that's it. Once... They actually talk about how beautiful Earth is, um, even though the whole time Ron Perlman's calling it shit. Yeah. Call says. Call's never seen Earth. I'm yeah. assuming. And no, she says no. she's never seen. Yeah, it. she says this is my first time on Earth. And uh, and Ripley goes, yeah, "It's mine too." R- well, she says, "Don't sound so disappointed." Oh, you got a different. I guess because I, I think it's her. I think it's her memories. It's her remembering Ripley. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she's like, "It's beautiful," and they're like, "Yeah," and that's the end. Or said it's, it's been like a long time or something like that. That's what Ripley said. But yeah, that's it. That's the Alien Resurrection. From 1997, and the end hey. of the Sigourney Weaver saga. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, now that we're done talking about the movie, let's talk about the comments that you all left us on Twitter and Instagram about this movie. We do this every week, so make sure to check, uh, you know, to follow us on Twitter and Instagram in order to leave us comments that we will read on the show. So our first comment on Twitter is from So Wizard Podcast. It says it's shit. I remember seeing it in theaters with my girlfriend, now wife, and we both hated it. <laughs> I try to, I try not to read the comments before people come in, but that one pop up. It's like it's shit. I just, I really like. I just that that comment spoke to me because that sounds like something I was like shit. Like I love that. <laughs> Good on you. Uh, our next one is from at Perpetual Cinema. It says great movie. It is to sci-fi what Scream was to slashers. A true genre film with an undertone of a wink and a nod. All right. I like that we're on like both sides of the fence here. Just, I'm glad they really enjoy it. Our next yeah, one is from Vix Movies. Den. Oh, Jesus. At Vix Movie Den. Reading is hard, guys. Uh, didn't get better with age. The more I revisited it, the more I grew to dislike it, despite Weaver being back. All right. We are literally going down to up to down. Let's see where we're going next. Our next comment is from at Movies Days or Movies for Days. Easily the least good of the four, but a generally fun time if you're down. Feels like a proto Firefly, but with a Xenomorph. Well, I think Josh didn't Josh Whedon write Firefly. He did. He did. Okay. So that makes that makes a lot of sense. Uh, The ship is a nice tactile set with real variety. Plus, there's a Ron Perlman, a Brad Dorif, a Don Hedaya, and a Michael Wincott. All the right. Wild Michael Wincott. Yes. And our final comment on Twitter is from Glorious Schlock. Love it. it says disappointing end to an interesting set of movies. Alien and Aliens are modern classics. And Alien 3 gave us David Fincher as a director, even though he despises that movie. But nothing really stuck with Resurrection. They didn't say that part. I added that in. But nothing really stuck from uh, Resurrection. All right. Thank you to yeah, everybody true. who commented on Twitter. Now we are going to read the comments from Instagram. I think we just, oh, we only had one. <laughs> it was from oh. at Ty, the blockbuster daddy. So we, rec- as I said, we record these a lot. We're recording these in advance. So hack the movies episode on this will be out tomorrow as a recording. But when you hear our episode, it would have been out last week. So I didn't listen to, I don't know what hack the movies said yet. So it didn't pers- it didn't, you know, create any opinions. Yeah, but it was Ty the Blockbuster Daddy on Instagram said getting ready for hack the movies on on Monday. And I said, yes, but ours is coming out later. So, <laughs> yes, we perfect. didn't copy them. I'm sorry. Just the way it falls. We, res- we respect. Uh, listen, why we released an, our aliens episode literally the day before another amazing podcast released their aliens episode. Sometimes shit just happens. But thank you. Yep. To everybody who left a comment on Twitter and Instagram, make sure to leave a comment when you see, you know, I post it the day before we record. So make sure to leave your comments. All right. As a couple of weeks, we'll venture back into this franchise. Well, if some say it's not part of this franchise, some say it is part of the franchise. But we're going to be venturing into the world of Alien versus Predator. Which is not my first time seeing this. Movie. Actually, I do want to point something out. There's actually a different cut of this movie that at the very end, instead of Sigourney Weaver, like, blooding the thing to kill the newborn, uh, oh, Lord. Bust Rhymes actually jumped out of nowhere. <laughs> and he's like, trick or treat, motherfucker! And it beats its ass. Which that movie would come out, I think, wasn't that movie, 2001? Alien, or Halloween Resurrection? <laughs> or ahead of its time. This is when he first shows up. 
<laughs> yeah, this is his first appearance. Oh lord! But yeah, we're gonna be He's in a hiding in the ship somewhere. He is. He was in Space Ghost. He got high sucking on the pipes. <laughs> oh He's my like... god! So yeah, in a couple weeks, we're gonna be venturing into 2004's Alien vs. Predator, directed by Paul W. S. Anderson of Mortal Kombat and Resident Evil fame. Next and week, Horizon. Oh, and Event Horizon. Yep. Is it is it bad that I had watched? Alien versus Predator before I watched Alien. That's fine. You've already watched it. You fixed it. It is what it is. That's just how some people. It doesn't really. It doesn't really matter. You got to get the 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 bad ones out of the way before you get to the good. Yep. Also, they don't really connect to those movies. They're in their own universe, kind of. I mean, so I knew I knew about Alien, and I, you know, I'm like Victor. I looked up stuff. I was the Cliff Notes version of everything because I couldn't watch it. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to do research on it before. I played Alien vs. Predator on the Super Nintendo. This is when we get this is where we get the beefiest Predators in of all the Predators you'll ever see in any of the movies. These Predators are yeah. fucking roided through. And they, <laughs> and they suck. They are awful. They but we'll suck. get to that in a couple weeks because next week we have a special guest joining us. Our very f- he's returning after a very long time. It feels like he was our very first guest on this show. A uh, a very first uh, guest who is also on another podcast. As I should say, we've had we had other guests on. Uh, we had like our friends and stuff before, but like I mean, Justin from Epic Film Guys is our friend now. At least we hope so. He's gonna come join us next week for episode ninety three, but we don't know what we're covering yet. This is going to be a surprise, which is going to be fun. Because as of right now, we're recording. We don't know what the hell we're going to be talking about next week. So there you go. But we're going to have our, our, our good friend, Justin from Epic film guys and brain stew coming in to talk about whatever he decides to choose. So that's going to be a good time. I'm very excited to bring to have him back and get to talk about whatever he decides to choose. Cause we, you know, it's going to be a good one. You know, it's going to be a good one. He's definitely someone who has good taste in in movies. Oh, so he's like me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah. So make sure to, I mean, throughout the week, make sure to check out our whatever. Uh, we're recording a lot of episodes ahead of time, so I I couldn't tell you what episode of The Last of Us is out, but there is a episode of a review of whatever the latest episode of The Last of Us is at this moment. So check that out earlier in the week. I can't tell you who's on it because I don't know. Um, <laughs> future recordings. Also, future. our good friends over at Hack the Movies also just released a review last week on Alien Resurrection. And I know our good friend Joel Escola is a guest on that episode. So make sure to go check out Hack the Movies episode of Alien Resurrection. You know, it's always going to be a good time. Any, you, you should... You should watch it. I can't. You need to. Just, it's so good. I'm sure it is. Action Movies is a great podcast. And of course, when Joe's also on the podcast, it makes it even better. And I know, like, uh, you know, it's just, they've been covered. They've had great reviews on all of the alien movies. So I want, Very I sad. will, I will, I want Tony from Hack the Movies to invite me on to talk about kaiju stuff, though I've never listened to any of this stuff. Well, you should, so start. Not you should start right now. <laughs> I'm trying to get caught up. I got so many podcasts I listen to. Yeah, tell me. But before this uh, hits two hours, we're going to get going. So I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for all the support you guys share. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on the video on YouTube if you watch over there. Or even if you don't watch us over there, go over to YouTube and like, comment, and subscribe to our channel pretty cool we do our live shows yes that's where we do our live shows also thank you to for all the downloads that you guys are doing we're 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 killing it and it's all because of you so make sure wherever you listen to us make sure to if you can rate us rate us five stars or whatever you think we deserve and if you listen to us on apple podcasts good pods or wherever you can leave a review please do it helps us out it gets us into more people's ears and you know, we want to be in more people's ears because we think we're doing a pretty good job over here and hopefully you guys are too. So thank you for all the support. We appreciate you. we got a lot yeah, of things absolutely. going on. 
uh, very, very soon. I'm very excited, so stay tuned, and we'll see you all again next time. So until then, I am Brett Parker. That is Dan and Angel of DNA Gaming. We are Dissect That Film, and this has been the Dissect That Film Podcast, Episode 92. Make sure to go down in the description if you want to follow us anywhere. You know, we're all down there. You know where we are. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.